Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we are hitting the second game out of four in the Deponia series, Chaos on Deponia. Once again it is developed and published by Didylic Entertainment, and is available usually again for £10.74 slash $12.99, but it does go on sale, and I mean huge sale very often, so keep your eyes peeled like a banana na na na. Uh, so, <laughs> once more, we play as Rufus, whose goal it is to get Goal, the goal of becoming one whole Goal, as Goal accidentally got her consciousness split into three parts, whole again. Uh, so, to summarise, Goal splits into three different cartridges, we need to get her as one whole Goal again. Sorted! Now, the achievements and trophies this time around are slightly a bit more complicated than the first game, as in we need to do quite a few objectives to get achievements later on, and there are a few more potentially trickier mini games we can't uh, skip out on. So obviously just make sure to watch and listen to everything that I am saying so you don't miss a ting and also save often. It is still a very easy completion though with the same humour and same doofness with Rufus that we've all come to know and love. So then with that being said let us begin. And obviously what you can do is start a new game. Don't worry there's no stinking droggle drug mode this time which is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, but the first thing I do need to point out on is again you cannot skip the tutorial here uh, So yeah, don't skip the tutorial and also if you remember from the first game the cutscene with the singing singer with the guitar Well, you could skip it that time, but this time you cannot skip it. So um, You can press start to just directly cut skip scenes, but the ones with the singer you cannot so just don't uh, end up mashing it like crazy and end up mashing it like hell. Um, I'll tell you exactly what I mean as we come up to the first one in just a couple of minutes time. So just be careful. Okay. So first thing we are going to need to be doing then, obviously we're going to talk to Bozo first. You can obviously have a look around. You press the left bumper and right bumper if you can't remember from the first one to uh, skip through. Uh, objects when you are close, so we're gonna talk to Bozo, big bad Bozo. Uh, again, obviously pressing the A button. This uh, usually means the interaction button, where we either talk to people or we pick things up. Now, obviously, he's gonna tell you to use said A button to uh, pick it up. Of course, this is for people that are just starting with this game for some reason, because you're missing out on a classic on the first game. But if you are um, Coming out with the first game straight away. He's going to tell you to pick it up. You press the A button. Lovely, jubbly. The X button, we don't really use much. That's basically to um, just look at things. If you press down on the D-pad, of course, your inventory will come up. And then, as you can see on the right, you can combine items. So you have to select an item first, then press the Y button, and then press the Y button again on the thing that you want to combine it with. So... Obviously, you can do whatever you want here. Press the A button, select something, Y button on the one, Y button on the other, and that will get that going. So, stick it in the inconspicuous bracket. Oh, I hope you're wearing a condom. Um, oh, it fits. <laughs> My small inconspicuous thing fits in the inconspicuous bracket. Press the button. And eventually... <laughs> Eventually, we will be getting there. Eventually, eventually. But this was another classic game. Properly, properly enjoyed this one. Like I said, a little bit more complicated than the first one. So, these cutscenes, you can press the start button to skip. Don't go mashing the start button yet, though. Press start again is fine. And press start again is fine. But that's it. When we get to this guy right here, as you can remember from the first one, you must leave it. You must leave this guy sing. The homeless guy with the <laughs> awesome banging homemade hat, by the way. That is, well, that is fantastic. But every time, there's about five different times we're going to see this guy singing. So, just completely leave it and you will unlock the achievement. Huzzah! Once more from the top.
So the achievement should unlock in just a bit. So like I said, you can skip the other cutscenes. It's only the guy singing that you cannot skip. So now we end up at uh, Grandma Oots, 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 Oots. Her name is Grandma Oots, and she does look like a raver. She is basically knitting a make-you-feel-good purse, uh, ready for her next raven. We all know what a make-you-feel-good purse is, right? Right? Vodka and the like. So, we can finally begin. Now, we press the B button again to mash through the dialogue, um, which obviously is going to be a lot of dialogue, so you can mash the B button there. So, first things first, on the right-hand side is the toolbox. Interact with that first, and then whap out the uh, power inverter. Bop, there we go. And now just interact with the hammer, and then <laughs> Doofus the Rufus. I prefer to call him Doofus because, uh, well, he comes across a bit, so. He's going to choke out the bird. He's not going to have a happy life as this bird. Not with us around, anyway. So, again, interact with the hammer. We can sort of take it off. Sort of take it off, anyway. <laughs> I tell you what, if you wanted bird stew, now's the time to do it. Pick up the hammer again underneath the tablecloth right there. And now we are just about to set Grandma Oots 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 on fire. Happy days. Next, open the bathroom door, which is kind of like this fridge looking door, except it's a bathroom. I don't know where she's supposed to stick her legs. I think she just pees standing up on the actual toilet. So, after Doc here and Grandma Oots Oots are done, we are going to interact with the box where the canary is. We do get electrocuted and still survive because we are hardcore, and that's games for you, baby. Now we are going to use the power inverter in the box. So again, you uh, press down on the D-pad and make sure that the power inverter is selected and then press the Y button to use said item with another item. You can also uh, quickly go across your inventory using the left and, D uh, left and right D-pad at, the um, at the bottom there. Uh, using the flush handle, that'll, <laughs> that'll flush the bird. Oh man, he is looking... Unlucky. Now we need to use the flush button, which is on the sink. Just in the middle of the sink there. You can probably see it. Flush button. Press that one once. And there we go. So the bird finally gets a bit of reprieve. Thank God. And then we are going to use the tablecloth with the sink. So it should be the only item that we've got. Use the tablecloth. Press Y with the sink. And, uh, well... Is the bird going to have us happily ever after? I don't know. Let's find out. But we need to press the other button. Just to the right of the bird. So give that a little pushy pushy. Muck nushy nushy. And the answer is... Ah, oh, hell no. We are making bird stew tonight. Or Grandma Roots is anyway. After her uh, big drug drink fueled rave. Pick up the soaked tablecloth underneath. And then use the soaked tablecloth... On the fire. Should be your only item again, so press the Y button there. And now we can finally get the hammer. And now it's time to leave before Grandma Oots Oots comes down and then gets really pissed off at us. So apparently this is a really good idea, obviously not, but we're going to use the bellows first, just underneath Rufus's right foot. Bam. Give it a little squirt, squirty squirt. And then we're going to use the pan handle, which is under Rufus's left foot. Again, I don't know how he's managed to strap himself in. I mean, it is fantastic, it does look good, but uh, yeah. So we've just knocked Doc out. Use the pan handle <laughs> underneath uh, your left foot right there. Ali oop. Now just use the knife with the fireworks. Just press the A button on it. You don't have to piss around with any inventory stuff. The fireworks above your head. Again, this is all safe and perfectly legal to do. So if you want to do it for a laugh in your hometown, well, be my guest. Yeah, no, don't actually, don't do this. Use the pan handle. Use the bellows one more time. And then we're on to a wiener. 
There we go, so cutscene will start. So again, like I said, with these cutscenes, we can press the start button. Also, one thing that I didn't know um, until after I'd completed the game, when there are a lot of dialogue options happening, you can press the start button. You know when you're pressing the B button to skip through the dialogue quickly? You can actually press the start button to sort of skip it all entirely. Uh, so, there's just a choice if you wanted to do that, completely up to you. But, here is another missable achievement. Do not press the button on the left just yet. Just keep uh, interacting with the badge on the right. You need to blow that five times for one of my most favourite um, achievement titles ever. Keep blowing. Blowing. You've got a job to do. Keep, keep blowing that job. Blow job! <laughs> oh, I could have set that up even better, but my brain's turned to mush. So, <laughs> just blow that a total of four to five times, and then you can press the button on the left. Make sure to get a blow job first before you hit her G button. The, the G button, the green button there, even though it was red. Anyway, again, <laughs> we're going to be pressing the start button a couple of times, that we can just go through the cutscenes, but wait! Do not mash the crap out of it just yet. So you can go past this one. As soon as you hear the guitar, stop. Enjoy the song for five because Huzzah with booze and so forth will be yours after listening to this guy. Okay then, so I need to talk to you about the next achievement. So basically there are 12 what's called pin-up pieces. They look like a little puzzle piece which aren't always easy to find. Now collect all 12 through the game and you get an achievement called pin-up goal. But there's another achievement called cheater in which you have to pick up the same piece 12 times. So you have to save, load, pick it up, pick up the same piece until it unlocks as we uh, have a look at the note on the door here. But doing that voids the pin-up goal achievement but there are a few ways you can go about doing it to unlock both in one playthrough. So first of all, we are going to make a save. So obviously, uh, press start, go into save slash load. And I always make two saves because I am paranoid as hell, bruh. Um, and basically, we're, we're trying, and the pinup piece, if you press the right bumper there, just by the radar, just on the right of the radar, that is where the first one is, and you'll hear this little noise that you know when you've picked it up. So when you pick it up, now, I am actually showing you how to do this the wrong way, I believe, because it did not work for me for whatever reason. So we're trying to take advantage of the way the live syncs cloud uh, sort of works. And saves to complete this without starting over. So, like I said, we've made the save, we picked up the piece, and then we've closed out of the game completely. Now, what's supposed to happen is live is supposed to sync that file to the cloud. Obviously, it didn't for me, and I will show you why in just a minute. Uh, so, open up the game again. And then what we're going to do then is pick up the piece... And then we're just going to keep reloading that until we get the achievement, again, called Cheater. So we need to pick it, pick it up, obviously, 12 times, um, because that's how many puzzle pieces that we need. So just keep doing that. Now, um, also, for anything like um, hit something 10 times or do something 12 times, do something 15 times, I... Edit it, I edit it down just a little bit, just to save a little bit of time in the video. Um, but obviously, if I tell you to keep doing it until it unlocks, you keep doing it until it unlocks. I promise I won't let you down. And if I do, well, I owe you a tenner. Just don't lie about it, because I don't actually have a tenner. So, <laughs> just keep smashing it out for now, then. Until we are going to come up to it. Now, we are going to come up to the achievement in just a minute. Well, I've done it a couple of times so far, but it is a total of 12 times. So, here we go then. So we've got the cheater achievement, lovely, jubbly, up the bubbly. Now what you're supposed to do is hit the guide button, go down to manage games and add-ons, 
and then you're supposed to delete your local save data. Now, whether I accidentally um, deleted something else or or whatever, I really don't know what I've done. But but what's supposed to happen now is when you delete your local save data, it's supposed to prevent the cheater file from uploading. So when we reopen the game, you can then make sure to have a look that because uh, you can have a look and see if there's any puzzle pieces that you have got or haven't got. Obviously, we're supposed to not have one yet. But for whatever reason, there still was. Now, I'm only showing you this because, like I said, there's a couple of ways you can go around it. You can either start a new game. It only takes, well, literally about five minutes, just five or six minutes to get to this point again. Or you can leave this achievement until the very last. Uh, again, completely up to you. So if we obviously go down, press start, go down to bonus. And as you can see there in the puzzle, I still have one. By now, you're supposed to have zero puzzle pieces. So that is what confused the crap out of me. And I thought, well, what the hell am I supposed to do? But what you can do is just simply start a new game. Uh, if you've got that and you go and try to um, just carry on with the rest of the game, doing all the pin-up pieces, the pin-up goal achievement won't unlock. So it's very important that you don't just carry on with it. So if that does happen to you as well, you will have to start a new game, go through the tutorial, go through Grandma Uta's house, and get to the same point that we just were. I'm obviously not going to be showing you th this part again, but obviously you can skip the tutorial, and you can skip the uh, huzzah scenes right here. So apologies there, that, that is a bit of a pain in the ass really. Hopefully it works better for you there than it did for me. I've got no idea why it didn't work for me, um, but if somebody, if it does work for somebody, please let me know in the comment section below so that it can help someone else out as well. Like I said, it it doesn't take too long to get to this point anyway, you know, in five to seven minutes or so, but obviously, you know, it's always better if you want to try and avoid it. So this is the point we're on then. Again, get to this point and just make sure that you've got zero puzzle pieces. As we have a look at the little note, we are going to just double check that we've got zero puzzle pieces first before we carry on. There we go. So as long as you've got no puzzle pieces, then you should be golden nuggets to go. So you've got the cheater achievement. It's taken a couple of minutes to get to this point. So again, apologies, that, that kind of was a bit of a mess since I thought it was going to work for me. Since it didn't, we can now pick up that pin-up piece and we can swiftly move on. So before heading outside, have a look in the trash can because that's what you always do, right? You can smell some fish or something in there and you think, you know what? Oh, buddy, I'm a little bit peckish right now. All right, then, mate, as soon as we're done here, exit to the harbour. Did you like my Australian accent? Ha! Tony's mother. It's funny because she smells like fish. And poop, I expect. Seagull poop. So this is the map of places that we can go. We can go to around five places, but for now there's only one that we can go to, and that is the industrial park. Um, these areas are not too big or anything, so, you know, don't worry if you think they're going to be absolutely massive. They're not too bad at all. Uh, now what we're going to do is head to the right. As you can see, Doc's workshop there is just on the right. So nip your buns in there, boy. Okay, a couple of things we're going to do. Right here, we're going to pick up the crank first, which is just to the right of the door. And, oh, who's a good robo-dog? Probably smarter than me. Pick up the electrical tape, about, just above where the crank was. And then we need to pick up the stick near where Clever Bite is. Or the dog. Dog Bite. Clever Bite. So, what we need to do is go into your inventory, combine the electrical tape with the stick. So, again, press the A button on the... Um, electrical tape obviously to interact with it and then press the Y button and the Y button again with a stick That is going to get you an insulated stick Pick up the second pinup part on the top of the shelf just by the dog as you can see you've probably just seen it there It can't they can be easily missed, but you should now have two puzzle pieces And I wonder what that's going to be goal looking very seductive as it were I Tried that once and then people threw up so well, I took I took the calendars away. Saddening. 
So we need to use the stick there with clever bite. Again, if you press the uh, start button there when uh, dialogue's happening, like I said, it just completely uh, sm it, it fast tracks it so you don't actually have to go through any of the dialogue. But I keep uh, smashing the B button ju just to know where we're at because it gets a little confusing otherwise. So go ahead, pick up the stick. He may. <laughs> Clever bite f is hilarious. He copies our laugh and I. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. So anyway, we need to do the above steps twice more. So we basically need to play fetch with the dog three times. So again, use the stick with clever bite. And we're just going to do the same thing uh, once more after this time. Basically, this is just a setup for, a, for an achievement later on. So as soon as we get the stick, pick up the stick again and then do the same thing uh, just once more. So you basically played fresh through three times. Okay then, right, when, obviously this isn't working, he's just taking the piss out of us, again hilariously, so what we're going to do is use the stick with the lamp just above our head there, where we've got the second pin-up piece, so again, I, I just use the uh, left and right stick there to quickly nip through the inventory, you should know what a stick looks like, I hope, if not then, man, go outside, <laughs> anyway, it should be lit now, so we can pick up the stick, get um, pick up the stick and get an insulated and highly charged stick. Use that insulated and highly charged stick with clever bite, and he is going to lose his brain, his nuts, and. Well, he did now, or he's sleeping, for those who want a more PG version. He not dead, we haven't just fried his brain, he is very much alive and just sleeping for the rest of his life. Ugh, awkward. So go right twice, we should now be in Doc's office. You remember Doc, who was a bit crazy with the booze, he seems to have chilled out on the booze now from the first game in the Wasteland. So we're going to have a little chat with Doc. Again, if you want to, you can just press the start button and end the dialogue extremely quickly. Or you can just keep smashing the B button. Again, I'm just going to keep doing the B button, as I've already said, uh, to make it a bit easier to follow along, as it can get quite confusing. So, when, we pick, uh, when we're good with Rufus here, go to the desk, which is next to the ramp on the left-hand side. And we need to pick up a screwdriver. And the third pinup part as well. So make sure to pick up the screwdriver, as you can see, and the third pinup part, the little puzzle piece. Jobs are good, un, and then we can exit three times back out all the way to Doc Tor's workshop. Doctor Yan Itor. Okay, so very excitingly, we're going to use the map for the first time after these uh, weird little bits of guys stop perving on us. I know my package looks fantastic, but stop it. Alright? Well, that's not confusing at all, is it? So, we're going to use the map now, pressing the A button just next to the furnace there, and we're heading back to the dock. We're going docking, baby. And if you don't know what docking is, do not Google it. Just trust me, okay? Just, just don't do it. So, we're going to get beaten the crap out of by uh, one-eyed tough men. 
Leela from Futurama's boyfriend. <laughs> so we do get knocked the fudge out. Again, any cutscenes like that, you can just uh, press start to quit. We're all good. And now we go into the door to the left of us. Gilligan's Gadget Garden. Which sounds seriously goddamn key. Now we're going to talk a little bit to this guy and his robot. The whatever o -mat it was. But basically what we're going to do is just choose the top option. We're going to be getting an achievement here called Lollipop or Love. So give me Platinum Proof Professional. Quality is of the essence. I think you can choose anything. And the same outcome will always happen. But look how happy he looks with the lollipop. Awesome. I hope your thumb's not going to cramp up uh, <laughs> pressing the B button a whole bunch of times. Like I said, you can press the start button and then just pause, pause the video if you don't want to keep mashing the B button. But what we've got then is cartridges and a remote from Doc. So what we need to do, combine the cartridge and remote. So again, press the E button there obviously on the cartridge. Press Y and then press Y on the remote. And that gets us a remote including cartridges. Who would have thought that? So we can exit out of here three times until, once again, we are outside of Doc's workshop. Our friend Dr. Jan Itor. So, once again, we are going to use the map next to the furnace. We're going docking again. Like I said, don't Google it, um, because you will cry with unlucky sad tears. And then we go into the harbour, which we are already uh, just on there. So exit to the harbour, and then we're going to be entering the tavern, which is the sort of purple door with the weird writing on it and the generator on the top. Yeah, head in there. So we are going to be doing a lot of dialoguing right here. Uh, so head downstairs there, through the open door, just at the top, and we're going to pick up the sugar dispenser first. Eventually, when I just about realize where it is, pick up the sugar dispenser, pick up the sugar dispenser, pick up the sugar... Just on the table with Bozo there, so... Thank you, we made it. Uh, pick up the fourth out of twelve pinup part. It's basically on the settee. It's on a green speaker box just underneath the bottle there by the bathroom door. So make sure to grab that. Should be pinup part four out of twelve. And now we can talk to goal. So... Wasn't entirely sure sort of what triggers um, each goal, um, as you'll be able to see now. Uh, we've got the remote control with the cartridges, so what we need to do, we're basically just going to exhaust all dialogue, which is going to take a couple of minutes to do, but, you know, oink 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 and stuff. So that's it, all we're doing then is just smashing through every tiny bit of dialogue for the moment. So you want to get your... Uh you want to get your steroid-induced massive muscle fingers and thumbs ready for this part.
Okay, so now we need to change goals versions. Basically, there's uh, lady goal, baby goal, and semeny goal. I, I mean, spunky goal. Now, what you need to do is get the uh, use the remote with her, and then we get to choose another option. Um, I accidentally just speak to Gulliver, so if you accidentally do that, choose the I um, need to use the bathroom dialogue option right there. Uh, so I was going to do that after, but, uh, you know, accidentally just done that. So <laughs> we will get there eventually. So if you speak to Gulliver again, just say, I um, need to use the bathroom. And then we can say, see you later, Baldinator. Okay, right. So now we're good. So now again, when you've got the control, press the Y button with goal. And then you can just choose any of the question marks for now. So like I said, there's three different versions of goal. Baby, lady, and see me. Spunky, damn it. So, this time, and there's basically a couple of dialogue options that we need again for uh, later achievements. But, once I say, like I said, because we're going through all the dialogue anyway, it doesn't matter. But, speaking to Spunky Goal here, the what we need to choose eventually is what do I have to do to get you to come with me? That's part of the setup for the super cool achievement later on. But again, just blast through all the dialogue anyway and you will get... The, what do I have to do to get you to come with me anyway? All right, and then vastly and lastly, what we need to get then is Baby Goal, who is just so cute and innocent. So again, use the remote with Goal, click on the other question mark, because obviously she's already Spunky Goal, so you would have had the choice to choose Lady Goal or Baby Goal. Y you know how it works. That, that works absolutely fine. And it'll just be the same thing. We're going to smash through all of the dialogue anyway, but basically, while we talk to Baby Goal, we're going to get the option... Hey baby, slash what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? You know, the old epic charmer, which precisely works on, I assume, no women. I mean, if any women are watching this, please let me know if conversations like that actually work. It never used to work for me, so... Unless that's just my face. Probably just my face, that's fine. But basically, <laughs> say in those conversations, that is part of the animal lover achievement later on. So, as long as you exhaust all dialogue options, you should get those two anyway. And since we're just about done with goal, finally enough, after about four or five minutes, now we're going to speak to Bozo on the left there. Big, huge, massive boy with a big cup of coffee. Now what we're going to say, we actually do need to pick some particular options, dialogue options. The first thing we're going to say is, what were you going to say earlier? Something about a special boarding dot 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 maneuver. And then choose... And then choose, I do believe, Seaman Goal likes me. Spunky Goal likes me. Why do I keep saying that? Uh, <laughs> and then for the last one, we're going to say, tell me more about your Bambina. Actually, there's one more little dialogue option. I think you should pay a visit to your Bambina. I think that's very, I think it's very noble of you, Doofus the Rufus.
And away goes Bozo to try and get the love of his absolute life. So we're going to speak to Nod, the one-eyed guy in the purple helmet. And we're going to say, I think an apology would be in order. And then after this, choose unorganized crime. What is that exactly? And he basically says uh, exactly how it is. May I join you? And then anything except the last option. So I just choose, I'm a gifted tinkerer. You, but you can literally choose any one of those except for the last option. And then choose, how can I prove to you that I'm reckless enough? And then next up, choose, I'll soon be part of your organization. You'll see. You'll see. And then after this one, just choose, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. All right. Now we're going to head up. But instead of going out, we're going to the right to talk to Garlef. Garlic Garlef. And then first thing we're going to say is, you're part of a resistance movement, or so I've heard. So when we just bang through all this, say, may I join you? And then basically the whole point of Rufus and Goal is to say, please let me join you. I'm trying to impress a woman or I want to impress a woman. And that's all he's doing it for is just to try and get into Goal. Uh, well, at least she's got three opportunities to get into her now, but uh, there we go. Just say, I'll be off then. And then with that, Garlic Garlef actually gives us the big nose bathroom key. Because his nose was massive. No, we just get a regular bathroom key. So we're going to head back down the stairs now. And then we're going to use the bathroom key with the bathroom door. It is on the right there, just behind goal where the love heart is. And then afterwards, we're going to get a shredded toilet paper. But that's all automatic. And then we'll be able to leave this said tavern. So we're going to go and grab another missable achievement now. So head to the guy on the boat. We get There is a bumper. We're going to interact with that with the A button. And he's going to go, Mamma mia, you piece of shit, da? Huh? And he's going to go and get a new one. What we need to do is actually leave the screen and come back. And we need to kick the bumper again. But we need to do this a total of ten times. So uh, he's an excellent dish. Nah, he's a bit of a crap singer. But we are just going to keep coming back and forth. We're going to kick his bumper a total of 10 times until the achievement unlocks. And then we can exit through the top door to the marketplace. It's nice. It's uh, it's good to be a piss taker and a nuisance all in, it, all in one. Rufus seems to have it all like so many of us. So again, like I said, I've just, uh, I have edited it down slightly. Um, I'm only doing it four or five times, I think, here. But just remember to keep on doing it 10 times or until the achievement unlocks. It should be 10 times. So just keep going until the achievement unlocks. And voila. Mamma mia. Boop bidi boo. Sorry. I really hope I just didn't offend any Italians there. So this should be the last one. <laughs> I am sorry. My accent's incredible. I can barely speak English. So I'm very sorry. Just put it down to stupidity from me. If you are offended. There we go, so I've done that 10 times. Again, feel free obviously to pause the video and just keep on doing it uh, for the time being. But as soon as you unlock the achievement, we're going to head all the way up, past the tavern, past the generator and to the marketplace. Now, immediately, just to the sort of right, it, it there's a screen with a sign with kind of what looks like a P on it. Uh, with a couple of people there speaking. There is a pin-up piece there that we have just picked up. So make sure to grab that. That should be number 5 out of 12. And then what you need to do is head down to the pharmacist there at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to come up uh, more towards the 4 screen now. So head to the left. We're going to look at the dumpster. Interact with that. And we're going to get some expired pills. 
we are going for a hell of a party with with uh, us, goal, goal, and other goal. And then what we need to do is use this shred of toilet paper. So again, press down to interact, uh, in, get your inventory out, get a shred of toilet paper and use it with the farm assist. Of course, pressing the Y button as you should mainly know by now. And if you don't, well, you should know. So it's our cue. So with that, he's going to give us the cucumber of revelation. Now, luckily, uh, Rufus doesn't have any room in his pockets, but luckily he has another place he can stick the cucumber for safekeeping. Anyway, exit through the top door um, between the map where you find the pinup part toward, to go towards Bellevue. Now, what we need to do to actually get inside of Bellevue... <laughs> that was a funny joke, right? Um, we need to use the fine nose. Uh, the fine nose, which is directly... To the left of you, we need to use the uh, peanut bowl with it. So get it out of the in inventory, press Y by the fine nose, and somehow that's going <laughs> to render it useless, more or less. So just at the bottom of the screen then, we are going to interact with this rake 10 times. This one's quite quick, so I've left it all in. So just interact with this rake 10 times until we are basically... Until we get the achievement called Bloody Nose. And also, we get something like Sideshow Bob. They really should have gone with the Sideshow Bob. You know, that Sideshow Bob Grendel would have gone... Grumble would have gone absolutely well. Anyway, smack yourself in the face ten times, and then we can move on. And then, once you've given yourself a hell of a concussion, we are going just past the map, and we're going to the right side of the house. We are going into Mr. Seagull's house now, which, as you can see, is the only house there, so you can't really miss it. Seagull's house, and it's not a seagull, it is a glorious old captain. And apparently he's our father as well, which I did not expect. So the only dialogue option we're going to choose is don't go away, I'll be back soon. Even though this is his house, I don't think he'll be going anywhere. Right, so we're going to be grabbing a couple of things in this particular room. We're going to look at the goldfish bowl first. So everything we look at, we're basically going to get a memo for it. So press the X button next to everything. Um, or all the things I tell you to do. So goldfish bowl first. Next, we're going to look at the window, which is just by the goldfish bowl. So again, press the X button by there, and we get another memo. Just behind you, I don't know if you could tell, the big massive bookcase, but that is what we're going to look at next. So again, it's the X button to get another memo. Memo! And then we need to just head to the left side of the room and press the X button next to these flowers, even though they just look like a bunch of overgrown weed. But hey, you know, certain people have specific taste in things, do they not? Oh. Now we've got all the memos we need of Captain Sneagle. We're going to actually press A next to the bookcase and another another little circle there is going to appear. So go to that, pull here for secret door, interact with that again with the A button. And then obviously, well, funnily enough, a secret door opens. Now there's a vacuum cleaner there just to your left, so we're going to interact with that and then we can exit back to Bellevue. And then what we're doing then, there is a house which you can probably, you can see, but it may be uh, quite easy to miss. There's a house underneath Seagull's house, so that is where we're off. In poet, mate. 
So what we need to do now is use all five memos with Crane the Poet. That's not a very poetic name, Mr. Crane. Bah! I win. So what you need to do then, um, obviously just give all five memos, which obviously they just look like pieces of paper. So I scroll with the left and right button, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, it doesn't matter any order, just give him all five memos and then take the piss out of his holy, big-toed, unlucky sock. Change your socks, bud. The cheese is strong with that one. Blech. And once all memos have been delivered, pick up the glass of water on the left, pick up the candle along with it, and then we need to pick up, there is an urn just at the very top there, so we're going to be grabbing that, even though that's his mother's ashes, you know, that's, uh, that's fine apparently. Crane doesn't have a choice because we've got a memo, if only that's how life worked, huh? Pick up the coal just underneath it as well, pick up the bread which is on a shelf to the right, and then pick up the thread mounted above the door, and then we can exit to Bellevue. Sorry to have just stolen all your things, including your, uh, your depart dearly departed mother. Sorry about that. Sorry. So, as long as you've got all these, these are all the things that you should have in your inventory at the moment. I'm just showing you, just in case there might be one thing that you were missing. So, make sure you got all of them, and then we can go to Bellevue. And then what we're going to do is head all the way back to left, past Seagull the... Hmm, I haven't got a I haven't got a rhyme for that guy yet. He looks deceitful. And AIDS infected. Anyway, down to the very bottom. We're not going to the marketplace, but we are going to the old town, which is on the very, very left. And there is a sixth pin-up part, just on the only table that is there. It will be located on the table, so go ahead and grab that. That should be. If you want to have a double check, you should now have six puzzle pieces and in your um, bonus puzzle menu. So now what we're going to do, you cannot skip this puzzle or you will void the trophies. So what we need to do, we need to get an order total to equal zero. So what we're going to do first is choose menu two. We're going to change two burgers to one burger. So you actually have to go down and then select the one burger. Change the large burger to large drink. So you've actually got to click on the uh, meal on the right and then change it. Then downsize both drinks to the smallest size, which is the middle um, spot. So not the smallest, but the sort of medium one. And you have to do it on both drinks, so make sure to do it on both drinks there. Bop. Now we need to change both drinks to two burgers. So again, you actually have to click on the drinks themselves to get over to the change it menu. So change both drinks to two burgers. Eventually we get there anyway. There we go. So now we can change that. It automatically goes on there. And then change the two burgers to one burger. Those burgers actually look pretty good. Like a McChicken sandwich covered in mayo. <laughs> and that looks even better. Apart from the hanging tomatoes and onions sticking out of it. Don't ruin my life. And then change the large burger to a large drink. And then downsize the large drink as much as you can, so you are left with nothing, which is basically the left spot. And that is how we get the all mine achievement. So uh, hopefully you um, went along with that quite nicely, whether you listened to me or actually looked at what I was doing there. But hopefully you would have got that achievement anyway. Now we've got a fortune cookie in our inventory, and we have no meal, or we've got a tiny small drink for it. So we are going back to Bellevue and we're going to use the map to uh, get to the dock. We're going docking again, baby. And here we go then. So what we're going to do is use the fortune cookie with the fisherman. So obviously you need to uh, whap it out from your inventory there. Make sure that it is selected. Usually, um, the last thing you pick up is usually automatically selected, but not all the time, so obviously just double check with that. Press Y to interact with the fisherman, and we are going to get an ID card. Hooray! There we go, so we've got the ID card. Now we can pick up the jar of hooks to get the um, 
What you get when you pick up a jar of hooks? Oh, that's right. A wiener. No, we get the hook. I and mean, we also need to pick up the bucket, which is on the right-hand side, just in front of the fisherman. And then we need to use the map to get back to Bellevue. So, in the seemingly unlimited pockets of Rufus, we need to somehow go ahead and find the ID card. So, whap out the ID card, brother, and then give it to the Platypus Trapper, or the guy behind the till. So, there it is. So, it was automatically selected for me, but obviously I just wanted to show you what it looked like anyway. So, we're going to so we're going to get the field guide. So, press X when we get to the field guide, when we're in the inventory. Now what we need to do, we need to look at every single picture and listen to what Rufus has to say about them. Or, he will refuse to do some things later in the game. So it's very important to look at everything and listen to what he has to say. Now, <laughs> I kept messing up by pressing the B button too many times, but he basically says two things, two lines of dialogue about each picture. So obviously just don't mash it. And then you won't keep going back. So again, just look at every picture, listen to everything he says. And we should be able to be good for everything later on. Have you looked at everything? Good. Right, so what we're going to do now is look at the greeting cards, and we're going to look at these five times. So just keep pressing the X button until the achievement unlocks with love from Portofisco. There it is, so we're all good. And when the achievement unlocks, we can just exit back to the old bell end view and use map to go back to t docks. And when we get to the docks, we're going to enter Gilligan's Gadget Garden, the door on the left. Now, again, we're going to be interacting and picking up quite a few items in here. So the first things we're going to be doing is picking up pin part number seven. It is on the left side. Uh, and basically, you could just see it in between the boxes that which kind of have like a question mark and an exclamation mark. So make sure to pick that one up. Then pick up the anti-gravity socks right next to the guy robot thing. And we're going to slap our ass on the ceiling. That looks like it hurt. And then we can pick up the indestructible sunglasses of eternal darkness. Which sounds pretty badass and I'd love to know what they do. Probably nothing much, but that's also cute. So we need to click the ground. That will remove the socks. And next, there is a shredder at the forefront of the screen. And we're going to need to be using the indestructible sunglasses of eternal darkness. With the shredder to show that actually... It's pretty destructible, and it's eternal lightness, so or internal lightness, just to take the piss. Um, so obviously, just make sure that you have got the pin-up part 7 out of 12 there from the two boxes on the left-hand side as well. Just a quick reminder. Now we need to use the cucumber hat on the juicer hat, which was just under the gravity socks there. Sorry, it's going a mile a minute, this one. <laughs> so put on the juicer hat, and then use the cucumber of revelation, I tell you what, if he's put that where I think he's put it, I don't want to be tasting it. But hey, it's each to their own, and I'm not a judgmental person. Uh, <laughs> but he does have a revelation, and he's probably going to spew after. Because cucumber tastes a butt, and butty cucumber is, I assume, not good. Cucumber on its own is disgusting, but you put a bit of butt on that is, well, ruins, ruins your life. Next, we are going to use the shredded sunglasses with the shop o -mat, the guy behind the till. So, whap open the indestructible sunglasses of eternal darkness and use them with the shop o -mat. And obviously, we've just had a ass revelation there, so he knows what's going to happen. Here, it smells funny. Next, we're going to pick up the golden dragon of invisibility. It's just on the pedestal behind us there on the left-hand side, so pick that one up. And then what we need to do, as soon as the shopper mat starts talking, we need to look at the Golden Dragon of Invincibility. Yeah, you're alright, yeah, it's all good, no nothing's happening. So go into your inventory, and then press the X button on the, I don't know, it kind of looks like a weird door or something. Weird light door, but it is the Dragon of Invincibility. 
And there we go. So what we need to do now, uh, what's, what I found easier was um, pressing the right stick to go to things this time. But you need to pick up the shredded sunglasses. There they are, which are on the till. So make sure to pick up the shredded sunglasses on the till. And that gives us the sunglass lens, left frame and right frame. Now go into your inventory and then combine the left frame with the sunglasses lens. You have to do this in this particular order. So the left frame is sunglasses lens. And then combine the left frame with lens with the right frame. So it doesn't work any other way. So you've got to go left frame with sunglasses lens and then the left frame with the lens with the right frame. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense and you've just seen it on the screen anyway. But that gives us the repaired sunglasses and then we can finally exit to the old Darkness Regis. Right then, get your ass to the map. We are going back to t Industrial Park. There we go, Industrial Park. Now what we're going to do is exit with the middle left. So we're not going up, so basically we're going to the weapons shop. And then here's Bozo. Oh, baby, he is looking fine, girl. So we're going to speak to Bozo, and then the one dialogue option we're going to choose is, of course, it's going to be great. I'm sure. And you see just how nut she is now, which we could all do with a woman like that in our life. Sometimes. God damn, you don't know if she's going to bone you or stab you. Uh, <laughs> that is a very unpredictable woman. Very angry woman. So we're going to head left now to outside Doc's workshop. Uh, by the way, that last that is a cutscene that you can actually skip by pressing the start button. So again, we'll, we, we'll come to that later on. We're coming to an achievement tied with uh, Bozo and his delightful lady friend. So we're going back to the dock and then we're going to exit to the harbour where the tavern is. Now, you see the generator on top of the tavern? Now, what we're going to use is the sugar dispenser on it. So, whap out the sugar, boy, and get the uh, and stick it in the generator. And it basically breaks down. Nice! Yes, it went as well as you'd expect. And is that all it takes to break generators? Is a bit of sugar? Hmm, I could do with uh, robbing some places. Just joking, of course, I don't rob. But we're entering the tavern. We're going to pick up the razor fish directly on the wall as we enter. So just make sure to pick up the razor fish. Everything's dark for now, which is nice. So we're going to head down the stairs now where we need to use a screwdriver with the jukebox flap, which is the bottom level sort of letter of the bar. Uh, you'll be able to see it's just, so it's just sort of behind the bar. So whip out the screwdriver. And it's just to the right on the bottom of the... There it is, just on the bottom of the jukebox. So press the white button when you've got the screwdriver out. And pick up the Dead Pigeon Tango music sheet. We are going to be coming up to one of the sort of longest achievements in the game. And it's just a bit... A bit menial, to be honest, but we uh, have to do it anyway if we want the 100%, of course. So we're going to exit now to the harbour, and what we're actually going to do is not kick this guy's bumper anymore. We've, we've, we'll we've give him a break. He's already bought 10. He must be <laughs> skint us by now. But we need to use the sheet music, the Dead Pigeon Tango, with the music stand, which is on the gondola. You'll be able to see it now. We'll come up with music stand. 
So just press Y when you've got the sheet up. And then what we need to do, like I said, this is now time for the lengthiest trophy probably in the game. Um, what we need to do is go back to the weapon shop. So head just past the tavern and start heading left. And, ah, oh, isn't this a nice a little area, huh? Anyway, we're just going to keep heading all the way to the left. And where we're going to end up is back outside the weapon shops where Big Bozo is. So this is it now for the sort of next 10 minutes or so. So we're going to speak to Bozo again. And then what you're going to say is, you're not going to give up just like that, are you? And then the same cutscene's going to happen. Only this time, the guy with the boat is going to come and sing a different song. So first of all, it was la 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 la. And this time, it's going to be the Dead Pigeon Tango. So again, we can press the start button. You don't have to watch the whole scene. Uh, press the start button. You'll see Bozo outside then, so you don't actually have to... Unlike the Hazar achievements with the guy in the cutscene singing, you don't have to listen to the... Watch the whole cutscene and listen to the whole song. So, that's good. So we've got one out of the four that we need. Now, what we need to do... Again, this is a repetitive thing for the next three songs at least, so we need to head back into the tavern. La la la. Head to the down of stairs Osh. And then interact with the jukebox, pressing the A button, of course. And then we're going to need to go basically from bottom to top. So um, next we'll do the Jolly Johnny song, which is third one down. Basically, if you do the top one, um, the story sort of progresses. And then you might miss out on the achievements. So that's why we're going from bottom to top. So now you've changed it to the Jolly Jolly song, what we need to do is head outside. We need to go and put some more sugar. Seemingly, we've got an unlimited amount of sugar, which... I mean, it comes in handy, especially in situations like this. So, whap out your sugar canister. Whap it inside the generator. And then, of course, that will shut everything down in the tavern. And, ever, and uh, our little jukebox player is going to get a little noopy. A little nappy nap right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, of course, head back into said tavern. And now we should be able to steal the Jolly Johnny song off him. There we go, so he's taking a nap, so make sure, there it is, the Jolly Johnny song, press A on it, and then we've got it. And now, of course, we can head back outside. It's uh, it, <laughs> it does take a while, this one, but uh, it's all worth it when you're drowning in that extra gamer score. Generator's going to start back up, obviously very coincidentally, perfectly there. And then, of course, what you need to do is get the music sheet out from your inventory again, and then just press the Y button. On the music stand. Oh, me and me, oh, I like a doll me or days. I also like a pizza and a pasta with doll me on him. Anyway, obviously, what we need to do now is just head all the way back to the weapon shops to Bozo and then just obviously say the same thing that we've done and then the cutscene will start. And then, obviously, the uh, little our little singing Italian Dolmio friend right there will obviously sing the Jolly Johnny song. But it is the same uh, dialogue option every single time. You're not going to give up just like that, are you? And then the same cutscene will happen. The guy will come and sing a different song, and then it's job done. So just do that for the next or the next song at least. Just go through this little bit again. And then when we get the final song, we'll be able to progress with the story. Obviously, this time, just make sure to choose the second option, which is the Junk Avalanche Taratella. Tarantella. Tarantella? Yeah, just pick the second one anyway, and then go through the same steps again.
Right then, so now our gondolier friend should have three sung three out of the four songs to Bozo. Now we can choose the top one, the mating song of the Junk Crabs, which is, uh, I mean, it sounds like a hell of a song. I wonder how many, I wonder, I wonder how many people have got pregnant to that one. Anyway, as soon as we do uh, that one, of course, we can just go through through the same steps, um, sticking the sugar in the generator again. Only this time, we're not going to go back to Bozo. We're just going to carry on, like I said, with the story. As soon as we, could you shut up, Mister Dolmio Day? I like a Dolmio. So you put the sugar in the generator. We are going to go and grab the final sheet, the mating song of the junk crabs. Now, I tell you what, you're going to have to want to get yourself checked out after listening to this song, I assume. But there it is. Grab it, and we will get the achievement in the not-too-distant future. But like I said, for now, we'll just be able to exit. And instead of... Uh, obviously, we're going to have to give him the sheet, of course. That's another main thing. Don't forget to give him the sheet, goddammit. Goddammit. Eventually, when we can move... It's just a shame there's no sprint button in this guy. I don't know why they took the sprint option away. Or the run faster. Or the jog option. Whatever it was from the last one. Why did they take it away? So, there we go. We've changed the sheet. So now, that should be the mating song of the Junk Crabs. And once again, we'll go back to Bozo a little bit later on. But for now, we're just going to head back up. All the way up. And exit to Marketplace. So once we're here then, just up a tiny bit, as you can see, it is the dark alley that we're going to go into. Now we're going to be getting the T4154123 achievement, and that is for uh, just basically it, using the repaired sunglasses. So go into your inventory, use the repaired sunglasses that we did a little bit earlier on. The left lens with, with the eyes in the trash on the right, just interact with it, and this is where we get the achievement. So, of course, if you've been following along, you obviously would have had these sunglasses from the from Gilligan's Gadget Shop just on the docks there. So, when we've got that achievement, we can now use the uh, glasses with the screwdrivers to actually uh, take the glasses apart again. So, that is exactly what we're going to do. Now we'll be coming back to them just a touch later. So we're going to exit back to the marketplace. We're going to exit all the way left outside Doc's workshop. The, the, the doctor. Dr. Dre. The whitest Dr. Dre you'll ever see. And then we're going to exit to the left. We're going basically back towards the weapon shop now. So now, this time, we can talk to Bozo. And we're going to say the same thing again to him. You're not just going to give up like that, are you? I mean, that is some primo woman. Again, is she going to make love to you? Is she going to chop off your testes? Who knows? Everyone deserves a woman like that. A apart from the chopping off the testes bit. I'm not too keen on that. But as soon as we get that, you should now get the Deponia Idol achievement. So that, hopefully, if you've been following along, you should be getting that one now. If not, you'll just have to go back to the gondolier and just change the uh, music sheets and come back. So, make sure to open up the valve there on the pipe. Um, you should have seen the, the pink, uh, the crabs in the pink pipe. So, uh, we use the pipe valve. Now we're going back to Doc's workshop and we're going back to the marketplace. And we're moving back up to the pharmacist area, which is on the, uh, obviously, at the forefront of the screen. Use the pipe diverter, which is directly in front of you. Just click it once, interact with it once, pressing the A button, and it should go from red and it should... Uh, connect to the green one. There we go. And then we just uh, basically need to go back to the weapon shop. Now, if you didn't see those pink crabs a bit earlier on, it's because you already moved the pipe diverter. So move it back, and you'll have to go back, make sure the crabs are there, and then move it back to red and green. So that's just in case uh, that happens. Uh, again, apologies if it's all going a bit fast at the minute. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to just explain about the Deponia Idol one there. Right, now we can use the pipe valve again. You should now see the crabs come out of the green pipe by Doc's workshop. When we go there, there it is. So, that, you know, that's easy enough. Everyone's got their uh, STD, their, their crabs. <laughs> crabs are not STDs. Crabs are delicious and goddamn pinchy. 
Go back to Doc's workshop. Here we are. We're going to go back out to the marketplace for now. We'll come back to uh, Mr. Krabs a little bit later on, and then we're going to exit all the way to the harbour. So now we need to go and interact with Mr. Dolmio Day there at the very bottom. And basically we need to use the bumper on it again. So just like we did for the achievement earlier, interact with the bumper pressing the A button. He's going to sing about Dolmio again and be really pissed off in Italian. Oh, Dolmio days. I like a spaghetti with a meatball. And then when we've done that, we can now just exit left to Little Venice. And we've got a couple of things that we're going to be doing here as well. So, why they've not got no sprint button on this game? Why they get rid of it for? Why am I talking, keep talking Italian? Anyway, as soon as we're here, we're going to pick up the antenna, which is directly in front of us. So, just, you know, happily rip that off with no consequences or actions whatsoever. Obviously, uh, you know, Rufus is very good at hiding things. And we're just going to keep heading to the left to the weapon shop. Once again, and for the final time, <laughs> Bozo is still there and still being rejected. But for the final time, we are going to say, you're not going to give up just like that, are you? I mean, five or six times, you'd think he'd sort of get the message. But, uh, well, <laughs> men are quite creepy like that. Sorry. Anyway... Now, a different cutscene is going to happen, so you can watch if you want and uh, see if the uh, see if it goes from murder to complete love tangs. But what we're going to do is not do that. Oh, in fact, I do actually. Oh, maybe I did. Ah, yeah, girl. Okay, so the show wasn't really that great, but um, I, I assume, since Bozo's not outside the door now, he is getting his uh, thing on, girl. Oh, yeah. So we're going left, back to Doc's workshop anyway, and we're going to use the map to get to Bellevue. All while Bozo is getting his Bozo Bozoed. If you can make any sense of that, <laughs> I think you know what I mean. So now we're in Bellevue, we're going to the right hand side next to Seagull's house uh, because we need to use the tree on it. La 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 dolmio day. There we go. So eventually when we get there, use the tree, the only tree as you can see on the right hand side, next to the coolest sounding character in the game, Hoedown. <laughs> Hoedown the gardener. Hilarious. Whoops, unlucky. Uh, but we're going to exit back to Bellevue now, so just go left in just a second. When I meant left, I meant we're going to get punched to absolute hell somehow, end up back in the marketplace. So we'll go back to Bellevue, but uh, we'll, I think we'll leave hold down for the time being. What we're going to do now is we're going to pick up the spade just underneath us there. Because the rake is now gone after being punched to death, almost. We're going to use the bucket that is in our inventory with the tub full of dirt. Which is not in the inventory. So, interact with the bucket there. Now, eventually, we get there eventually. For some reason, it took me a while to realise that I don't have a bucket of dirt. Uh, a tub of dirt in my inventory. So, <laughs> so just interact with the bucket. Uh, go off it and the tub of dirt is directly on your left. So, well, get a bucket full of dirt. Easy, right? Tiny. We need to pick up the egg. It's very small, but it is on the ground right next to where our tub of dirt is. So again, just press the right bumper or left bumper to go there. There it is. So interact with the egg now. And then this basically plays as a mini game. So what we're supposed to do, as you can see, there is a meerkat trap and two rocks on the right. Every time you interact with the egg, the, this bloody meerkat thing pops out of the ground and goes nuts and goes in a different place. So we need to get him in a certain position where we can place the trap and place the rocks. 
Um, because if you just do it sort of randomly, if you just place it somewhere randomly and then click on the meerkat, he's not exactly going to go for the trap, is he? Don't be so stupid. So what we need to do then is get this meerkat in one of the top four corners. One of the four corners. So as you can see, uh, as you'll be able to see. Now basically, we need to, he basically goes diagonal. We can put the two rocks in a diagonal position. And then we can put the trap at the end of it. Because when he's on the edge, he only goes sort of straight. For whatever reason, he only tends to go straight. So, as soon as he's in any one of the four corners, make sure to put... Like I said, he, we're going to go in a diagonal line. So put the meerkat trap the other side in the diagonal position. Same with the rocks. Then click on him. And then that should trap the meerkat. Um, I tried... Various and other different which ways, but for whatever reason, that was the only way that seemed to work. For me, anyway. So, now, where are we going? We're going back to the... Uh, going back to the dock. And then we're going to go back to the arbor. The harbor. So, where the gondola is, or was, you can probably just see an egg. So, that is another egg that we're going to pick up. Of course, now, remember, this is all crap in the field guide. All these platypus eggs and stuff. So now we're getting that one on the go. Open up your inventory, and there we go. We should now have enough um, items to collect to get the collecting agent achievement, and that is for having a completely full inventory. So, like I said, if you've been following along, you should get that. If not, of course, try and keep as many inventory items as you can. There are still plenty of things we can pick up along the way. Now we're going left to Little Venice. Oh, I wouldn't want to see Big Venice then. Goddamn. God damn. Now we need to make the repaired sunglasses again. And it has to be the left frame, left frame and lens. Then combine that with the right lens. So that is the order you have to do it in. Um, if you do mess it up, you can use the screwdriver to break them back down. But otherwise it just won't work. So it's got to be the left frame with the lens. And then combine that with the right lens. And then that should be as golden as golden nuggets as golden pooptacular. So now we can use the repaired sunglasses with the periscope. Or, sorry, repaired sunglasses left the lens with periscope. That's what we're going to do. And then the periscope is basically the big looking thing just on top of the hatch. Just on top there. Just on top of the map. As you can see here. There it is. So again, we get there eventually. So you can either, like I said, you can go right or you can just do what I've done there and he'll he'll go up anyway. Right, so we've got that. Now we can use the hen entry hatch. So interact with the entry hatch. So a few things we're doing in submarine. Now we're going to interact with the door to the radio room. There it is, right next to the pink door. And... What's going to happen then, we're going to get a couple of dialogue options with our friend. Uh, look who's back with the brand new Elvis rap. It's Cletus Elvis. Ech. Fantastic looking pointy beard though. So there's only one dialogue option we're going to choose, and it is, I'm sorry, but we have to refuse this assignment. So as soon as we can, uh, as soon as they stop yammering on a minute. There it is. So I'm sorry, but we have to refuse this assignment, which is the bottom option. So choose that. Well, at least we've got some slides on it, haven't we? Anyway, interact with the button right there, and the pink door will open. Now we need to get out our razor fish. Fish. 
Remember, we got that from the tavern a little bit earlier on, if you're wondering where you uh, get it from. And we're going to use that with the kitty. Oh my god, kitty wants snoo snoo. Big kitty wants snoo snoo. Well, um, by the looks of uh, Rufus, I think kitty got snoo snoo. Which is kind of uh, bad animalistic um, things there. Just, yeah, anyway, let's move on. So, hello, Donna. You're a bit, she's a bit off her nut. I think she's a bit pilled up at the minute. So, we'll say what we need to say and then head on out. So, first things first, when we are able to. We are going to say, what did she say? So the top option, what did she say? Next up, choose that I'll be made into shark food. Pretty much. Pedigree shark-like. And then for the final option, make sure to choose go ahead. So the very bottom option, go ahead. And then what that will do is basically unlock us the what women want achievement. Donna's happy, even though she's got no idea where she is or what day of the week it is by now. She's on a six-day bender, so she's a bit... Etc, <laughs> etc. Et but we do, like I said, get the What Women Want achievement for surviving the interview. And then we should be good to go. And we're going to head up to the right, past Donna. So apparently, uh, <laughs> she likes the look of us, which I'm not surprised. I mean... Rufus is a hot piece of ass, just like me. Pick up the tournament hand. That's a lie, by the way. Pick up the tournament hand. That we can see we're just at the bottom of the screen. And then we can exit back into the submersaide. Submarine, I mean. Submarine, I mean. And then we can exit to the left. And then we go back to the harbour and back to the dock. So, let's go and bug the fisherman again. All he's trying to do is catch some fish, and we're just going to piss him off. But we're going to use the razor fish with him. So, make sure that the razor fish is in your hand. Again, I don't know where the hell you're sticking all these items, but it uh, can't be tasty or pretty. Use the, Obviously, press the Y button to use it with him. And he's like, oh my god, you are something else, even though I've never seen you fish, bruh. And choose, I use a special kind of bait. It's the master kind of bait. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> just smash through the dialogue again. And then what we need to do is we now, now need to get the expired pills up, which we got from the pharmacist dumpster earlier on. So, go into your inventory, get the expired pills. You can take one if you want, but you probably ain't going to last that long, to be honest, to uh, feel the effect. And then use it with the bucket of bait next to the fisherman. And then we're going to use the bait from our inventory. There we go. Should be the top left one or should be at the top somewhere for you as well. Use that with the fisherman. And then we're going to get a, a tiger fish. Thanks, mate. Can't afford to pay you, okay? Bye. So we are he uh, exiting to the harbour and we're going to enter the tavern. Uh, basically, we need to speak to the top guy, Garlic Garlith. So 
So let's speak to our garlic infused friend right here. I don't know why he is a garlic infused friend, but we're gonna see why are you sitting on your lonesome first? Big garlic nose. <laughs> and then we're gonna say, I want to play. I'm gonna be playing a bit of rock, paper, scissors. So I want to play. And then choose I'm ready. Now this basically acts as sort of a mini game ish, uh, which we gotta do anyway. So what we need to do. Press start, so go down and press the start button there, and Rufus will lo lose two fingers. Oh my gosh, she cut her fingers off. Luckily, he doesn't actually really cut them off, otherwise, well, it would make it for a lot more difficult, <laughs> the game would be a lot more challenging for old Doofy Rufy. Next, press the Razorfish button on the left right there, so just press it once, and then press the start button. And, well, Rufus is going to lose his other two fingers. It's not going well for us so far. But what we can do now is press uh, the start button four times. Obviously, we've got our, uh, we haven't got any fingers. And for some reason, garlic doesn't use the paper option. So we're just going to press the start button four times. Right then, so that should be all good, four times, and lucky. Now, you can see the add button has just become available, so we need to click that one twice. So once, and twice, and then choose the start button as well. Rufus's finger meter, finger blaster meter should now be full. So he is going to have a great time with all his fingers. People love a full fingered man, I assume. And that should give us the secret knock. You don't have to remember it, of course. Old uh, Rufy Doofy will for us. Right then, heading downstairs, we're going to get out the remote. We're just going to change a bit of uh, Gold's personality. Now, wouldn't this make life easier if everyone had three personalities and we could just choose them whenever we wanted? You're pissing me off. Go to nice person. That's nice. So... We need to go to Baby Goal. If you don't see her on here um, as one of the options, that means she's already Baby Goal. So, happy days. So if you don't, so when you use the controller and you don't see the Baby Goal option, it already means that she is Baby Goal, like I said. And say, it is done. We are Resistance Fighters! Not sure why we don't walk out with her, but that's all good. So, let's get out of Mia, right Mia. We're going to exit to the harbour, and we're going to exit up to the marketplace. And then we are going into the dark alley when we get to the market. Meerkat place. Anybody like those adverts? Meerkat? Yeah, me too. Anyway, just up a little bit, sort of towards you right there is the dark alley. And that's where we're going. Now, this bit is... It is confusing if you don't know what you're doing, but what you have to do is press the start button by the door, go to your settings, and we need to turn the music all the way down. Now, a lot of people got confused about this, and rightly so. It's, it's a very clever way to do this, but that's what you have to do. You need to turn the music all the way down to zero, save the changes, and then we can just continue, and then we can use the door to perform the knock. Ah, uh, it's obviously knock the, the knock, you goddamn butthole. Right, quickly hide in the crate right next to the door when you can. And then Leah Bold, or Lie Bold. <laughs> Lying about his boldness, yeah, aren't we all? So eventually, like I said, as soon as you hide in the crate, I'm not sure if it's a time, time thing or anything, but, uh, you know, the quicker, the quicker you get in there, the quicker we can move on. So, 
Leo Bold, or li lying about being bold, gives us the old knock, eventually. And that is our way in. So now we can get out of the strange crate. Use the door again. And then it'll ask you if you want to turn the music on. If you want to, you can. If you if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's merely an option for you at this point. So, Janosch has uh, quite the lisp, as it were. But we're going to pick up pinup puzzle piece number eight. It's to the left of where, just underneath Janosch right there, you can just see it, uh, where Leibold is. So make sure to pick up that. That should be number eight out of 12. So if you want to double check that, more than welcome to. And now we can use the slides with the big slide projector there on the left. Now, the dialogue, matter, uh, the dialogue options do do matter here. Basically, what we need to avoid is the dialogue options that would set off Janosch's lisps. Lisp. Because as hilarious as it sounds, we do need to avoid that. What is this about ya? I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. Sorry. I hope I just didn't offend anyone who does actually have a lisp. Sorry. Please, please love me. So the first dialogue option we're going to choose is a symbol. So the second one from the bottom, choose a symbol. A symbol of hope. Next one we're going to choose is an Organon bombing fort. Which is the second option down. I thought it said an organ on bombing fart, so I I was uh, wet myself laughing the first time I read it until I realised it said fort, and then I was disappointed. I'm so childish. Our enemy will try to eradicate Deponia next. So our enemy will try to eradicate Deponia. Next option, choose our team will dare to attack. Again, third option down, our team will dare to attack. Next up then, choose I obtained topographical data locating one particular organ on fort. So the third option down, I obtained topographical data, uh, etc. organ on fart. Next up, choose detonate a bomb here and put an end to all life, marine and on land, which is the second option. So detonate a bomb here, put an end to all life, marine and on land. And finally, choose gold and her brain implant might mean an important shrimp in our hand. Third option down, gold and her brain might mean an important shrimp in our hand. So this is all of the dialogue options that we need. The guy, Janosch's lisp didn't get too baffly, and we can actually, we're actually good, and then we can move on.
So with that piece of fun over, what we're going to do, we're back at the tavern now. Baby Goal has agreed to Rufus's plans, so we just need a Seamony Goal, Spunky Goal, and Lady Goal. So we're going to use the remote on Goal. And once again, we are going to switch to the Seamon-induced Goal. I mean, Spunky Goal. God, why do I keep saying that? <laughs> Red. So there we go. Press the white button when you've got the remote. And choose Spunkiness. And then what we're going to need to do is just talk to Spunky Goal. And then we've got the Platypus Bataka. The, the mini-game battle that we have to do. Now, this personally, this battle for me took a couple of attempts. Um, after we just get the dialogue options, why hello doll come here often? But I'm just, I'm going to try and give you a few quick tips um, just to help out exactly where I can. We're going to go into this mini game battle where we basically have to defend and attack and then counter attack as well. So, in short, we need to look at where Gold's hand is pointing. As soon as you see where she's pointing, it'll either be your head, the middle, or the legs. Quickly move to that area using the left stick and quickly press the A button to defend. Now when that's done, you have about 2 seconds or so to counterattack, and the way to do that is wherever her stick isn't. I.e. if she's facing it down, her head is free, so you need to aim for her head. So the same controls apply, move using the left stick and then press A for the swipe. So soon, so let's get ahead. So obviously I just messed that one up slightly. Wherever she's pointing, she's pointing to my legs. So again, we need to defend there. Wherever she points, middle. So we're going to stick with the middle and then press the A button. So it's easy enough again when you sort of get used to it, but it may take you a couple of tries like it did me. Um, again, you see a head there. It's Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. you just got to be as quick as you can. So her feet were free there, so we smashed them to bits. Now you can't walk. So, uh, But what I am going to show you actually first is a defeat. I'm actually going to show her beating me because... Um, I'll, just show, well, I'll just show you what to do when we get there in a minute. So, it's an unlucky kick in the balls for us. Uh, she is... I mean, why can't we... We could just be able to continue. But basically, what you're going to see is this training dummy. Now, the achievement is for apparently not using it, but it turns out that you can. Now, I'm not sure... I Genuinely, I'm not sure how many times that we can use it or whatever, but basically, I end up using it twice... And it still did take me a couple of times, but I'm not sure if there is a point where the achievement gets voided. So this is like a Simon Says thing. So you see, hit the right leg once and then hit the right leg twice. And then there's a little arrow there, a little meter or whatever in the left-hand side. So there you go. It goes up into the red, but that is all I do. Um, now, I'm not sure if you get Rufus's combat skill level full that it voids the achievement. Again, sorry, I'm totally not sure. But doing it twice um, seemed to work and work just fine for me. So, again, if it does take you a couple of times, that's okay. It generally did take me a couple of tries as well. But just as soon as you see where her hands point in, quickly move to that place and press the A button. And then wherever, if her legs or her head is free, quickly move to that point. And hopefully you should get this done. Very quickly.
And that is how it's done. Yeah, boy. Rufus. <laughs> Rufus's boner is alive. And we had a good time doing it. So happy days. So Spunky Girl has agreed to Rufus's plan only after doing the one of the most annoying mini games in the game. That's fine. But now we're going to use the candle. So get it out of your inventory. And we're going to use it with the, with the other candle, which is in the tavern, to get a lit candle. Now again, me being stupid, I was looking for a lit candle, which I don't already have. But the candle is just um, at the bottom there. Bottom right next to the quick inventory. So use the candle with the candle and get a lit candle. Uh, luckily, thanks to video game logic, we're not going to burn up or the flame's not going to go out inside. So, well, we'll take that. But heading back out, we're going back up to the marketplace and we're going back to Doc Torb's workshop. Okay, so now we can finally use the big furnace in front of us. It looks delicious. Well, it just looks like a furnace, to be honest. So, interact with it using the A button. We're going to use the coal with the furnace. Obviously, we're going to be making a fire. Whoa, would you believe that that is what you do with a furnace? Make a fire? Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, there's the coal. Whap it in the furnace. And then we're going to use the lit candle with the furnace. I didn't know a small flame had that much power, but... Again, thanks to video game logic, it defies all odds, and it does. There we go. So, boing, baby, boing. And as you can see, just in the chimney at the top there, an egg has appeared. So, we need to go just past the map, and there will be an up option for us. As soon as I realize of how to actually use my legs and walk. There we go. So, round to the chimney. This is a little mini game. Oh, hello, Mr. Platypus. What are you doing there, boy? Anyway, the egg, like I said, it's just in the chimney. Um, I don't know where I seem to be heading. But if we head to the right, to the chimney, to the chimney, to the chimney, there we go. So, perfect. Now we need to do a puzzle, another mini game. It, very, it looks very complicated, but it really is not. All we got to do is press the A button on all the numbers and pipes once. So, I do it in an order. I'm not sure if you have to do it in a particular order, but I just do it in numbered orders. So... One, and then two is on the left, and then you've got three at the bottom, four just above that, five just above that one, and then six to the right, seven to the right of that, and then number eight down there. So you literally only have to interact with each pipe once, and then we can finally get our golden egg. Hooray! And I said it was a golden egg, it's actually a red fire platypus. So, tidy. Nice. Very nice. That gets us the achievement egg race anyway, and then we can enter Doc Torb's workshop. So then, a couple of things we're doing here. We're going to get the tiger fish, and we're going to use it with the bucket of paint. Or the paint bucket. And whatever you prefer to say, it's exactly the same thing. So now we've got a zebra fish. I know you Americans like to say zebra, but it's zebra in Britain's terms anyway. Well, maybe it's just me. Uh, combine the zebra fish or zebra fish with the water platypus egg, which would be the blue one at the top or whatever color that is. We're going to combine that and then we're going to, that gets us a franken fish with egg. Tidy. Exit right to the twice to get to the Dwoxers at Dwoffice. Hey Doc, don't don't mind us, we're just uh, rummaging through your stuff, I'm messing up your office again. We're going to combine the bucket of soil with the earth platypus egg. So again, get uh, interact with it, and press the Y button of course on the earth platypus egg. And now we're going to use the bucket and egg with the freezer. So make sure that is all interacted and you've got that on you, and then press the Y button there on the freezer. Right, tidy. Now there's going to be a switch that we're going to need to use, and we're going to need to use that twice. Oh, hello, Mr. Aggressive Platypus Man. So once, so he's in a bit of a hot tub. Nice. And then twice, so that we can freeze it. Unlucky. 
So, uh, right, now we can use the speed with the platypus, so get your speed out and interact that one with the platypus rather than the freezer. Oh, I didn't think it'd make a difference there, actually, so ignore that, you can do that. And then we can pick up the frozen earth platypus and then exit left once until we're in the next weird room. Now it's time to whip out our frankenfish. Basically, this is part of the animal lover achievement. So we need to use the frankenfish with egg. And we're going to use it on the electrodes. Which basically gets us a zebrafish with egg. Tidy. So we're going <laughs> to... So basically, we're going to zap him alive. That's pretty cool. Well, I wish I could do that with my genitals. I tell you what, that would be fantastic if they could become alive again. All shriveled and useless now, I'm afraid. So let's go into the doctor's office. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm all man, honestly. So basically, we need to just move to any three or four screens until we get a dialogue option saying the twitching has stopped. So just go back and forth um, in between the screens for the time being. And I think it's this one. Yeah, the twitching has stopped, so basically our zombie pet has now died again. But like I said, that is part of the animal lover achievement, which we will get a little bit later on now. So, uh, we're back in the lock, now we need to basically use that same frankenfish with egg, and we need to use it on the electrodes again. This time we're going to keep him alive, which would be nice. Jeez, I tell you what, it can't be good for you if you keep dying and coming alive again. Surely that sort of withers your insides and stuff a bit. Potentially. Right then, so to keep him alive, what we need to do is combine the zebrafish with egg with a glass of water that we've got in our inventory from Crane the Poet earlier on. Now, he might not... He might not do it straight away here. I think that's because Frankenfish is alive. But as soon as you get the dialogue option that says... Um, the twitching, or why is the fish twitching? That is when we need to combine the zebrafish with the glass of water. So, for me here, he's not doing it here. That's because he's well and truly alive. But it's every time he goes on about the twitching, that is when we need to do it. So, we're going to exit left twice until we're outside completely. And then, of course, once again, we're going to whip out your zebrafish, whip out your glass of water, which you've stored very neatly, and pop them in there. So we can't actually warp or use the map to go to Bellevue, so we're going to have to walk. That's disgusting! Nobody likes walking, Jesus Christ. So go to the marketplace, which, of course, is not there. I, it's uh, to the left rather than the upper left. And we're going to go to Bellevue, which, of course, is the one to the right and once again, when we're there, we need to combine the zebrafish with another glass of water before entering our Papap's house. Hopefully he's not jacking it in Seagull Diego. Now we have made it, we can now put our zebrafish in the uh, goldfish bowl by the window. Nice! Hey, cute little zebrafish. But that zebrafish is going to turn into something is what we need. <coughs> oh, it's a water platypus. Nice! So, well, we will actually do as Papa says. We are going to remove that monstrosity. And now we can exit Seagull's house and we're going back to left town. We're going back to left town. We're going left to old town. Close enough, right? <laughs> so there's a little doorway just past the uh, platypus man with the option up. So that is where we're going. We're going up, up, up and away. Where the music is my fantasy. Use the um, crank with <laughs> the crank handle, of course. I don't know what else you'd use a crank for. Possible. P 
possible pleasure, but I reckon that would hurt more than it would be pleasurable. Use crank with the crank handle, use the crank obviously, and that is what will get us the uh, platypus flying egg. Now we can exit to Bellevue and head up to Seagull's house again. So this time we're not actually uh, having a look at douchebag daddery, we're going up to the crow's nest which is just up the ladder there. So a couple of things to do here, what we're going to use is the urn first, so whip out your urn from your inventory offs, and then we're going to use that with the pipe on the left hand side. No it's not for smoking so don't you worry your bean holes about it. We're now going to combine the thread which is in your inventory with the hook which is also in your inventory to get. Wait for it. A hook on a thread. Oh my god, it's sensational. It's revolutionary. But what we are going to do is use the revolutionary hook on a thread with the wind sock. So it should be um, in, it should be all ready to go. Use it with the wind sock. And that will slam that bit down. Tidy as hell, girl. Use the wind sock with the grommet, which is on the pipe. Just on the bottom of the pipe there. You can just see it on the left. Down, down, down. Use the windsock with the grommet. There we go. So we get there eventually. So it should already be automatically good to go. Uh, all you have to do is pick the grommet, which took me a while for some reason. Brain mush. Use the flying platypus egg now with the windsock. Again, that should be in your inventory already selected. Use it with the windsock, and then as soon as that's done, we can exit down to Sneagle's snouts. So when we're here, we're going to use the hatch. It's attached to the satellite uh, kind of thing, just next to the ladder. There it is, that thing. So use the hatch once. Use the lint traps. Press A on the lint trap. And then we're going to get out our handheld vacuum cleaner. Again, that's impressive, since he's got a small jacket, although handheld is only small, I suppose. Unless he's put that on his, um, you know, thing for a little bit of thing. Use the handheld vacuum cleaner then with the lint trap, and we can get some lint, and we can go back up to the crow's nest. Next, we're going to whip out our fish. Oh, hi, fish. Come on, boy, get out your razor fish, man. There we go. Use that with the windsock. <laughs> and then we'll be able to pick up the windsock as well soon as... Oh, it's a frying platypus! I don't even know what the hell I just said there. It's a flying platypus. It's obviously what I meant to say. So we interact with the windsock again and we're going to be able to pick it up. And then what we can do is finally combine that windsock with the antenna that is in our inventory. I was going to say livery then, but that's... My, my, brain's, my brain's gone. Hope you can tell that. <laughs> so we've combined those two, we get a landing net, and now we can exit to Seagull's house and then exit back to Bellevue and go back towards the left hand side of life. Bad dad! Your white beard is pretty crap by the way. So, while we're here, we might as well catch that flying platypus. So, whip out your inventory again. We're going to get the bread out this time. Hi, bread. Hi, fish. Use it with the birdhouse there on the left-hand side. And then, when the flying platypus comes over, we're going to use the landing net we made with the windsock and that earlier. Use that with the flying platypus. And this is where the animal husbandry achievement should, or slash trophy, should unlock for us. So that should unlock nice and tidy. That's basically for catching all, getting all of the four platypuses. So now we've got them all. We can now put them on their respective nests. So, first things first then. What we're going to do is use the earth platypus with the nest. Next, we've got the egg a little bit earlier on. There is the nest. There you go. He melts. And he is looking pissed off. 
But, you know, up your guts, son. That's where you've got to rest your nest. Rest your buns. Next, we're going to Old Town. And we're going to use the flying platypus with the nest, which is next to the weird platypus guy. I mean, this guy really likes platypuses. I mean, really likes platypuses. He went to prison for it once, you know. Anyway, flying platypus, use it with a nest. And that is job done. That is second really pissed off looking platypus done. Talk to the platypus trapper and use the uh, dialogue option. Tell me more about these greeting cards. And then choose, uh, so when you've got the time, the second option. And then choose dialogue option, grab a bus, platypus. Which is just hilariously awful. But it is hilarious to me all the same. So now we can exit back to Bellevue and we're going to use the map to go to the industrial park. So when I can finally get through a door, use the map in the middle right there to go to the industrial park. Right, next to the map is going to be the next nest, and we're going to be use the angriest one of the four, I assume, is the fire platypus. There you go, so, uh, oh man, why are you look so sad? This is not so bad. So let's go to the marketplace, it's a nicer place, ah, shut up in your face. And we're going to exit to the harbour this time, and this is where we're going to put the final platypus on now it's very important that you hatch, you get all four eggs and hatch them first before placing them on the nest. Don't just place one on the nest and then do the next one. Um, achievements, so there might be one achievement that might not unlock and some bad things will happen and you'll mess up your game basically. So the nest is basically in the middle of the screen, uh, just past the tavern. There it is, just on top as you'll be able to see. So you don't actually have to climb up which is tidy. So yeah, that's just very important note. I probably should have told you earlier on, so my apologies about that. But make sure you, when you've got all four in your inventory platypuses, then we can put them in the nest. And that is that for that part. So now we can exit to the dock. We're going to use the map next to get to Bell End View, or just regular Bell View. I wouldn't like to view a Bell End either. But let's go and view the Bell, our father's Bell. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that, but we are actually going to view Seagull's bell. Um, and we're going to talk to him. Ooh. Put your bell away, Dad. This is not the time nor the place. Maybe on OnlyFans for those desperate enough to see it, but let's talk to Seagull <laughs> anyway. Oh my god, I've lost it. Now choose I did it. I did it! Platypus free, blah blah blah, and then choose don't go away, don't go away, I'll be back soon. Lovely jabbly mate, nah, we can talk to, uh, go, go out of Seagull's house and we're going back to the poet's house, just underneath Seagull's house, so we're going to talk to Crane this time. And we're going to unlock a missable achievement right here. So we're going to speak to Crane. And then choose the option, you know quite a bit about poetry, don't you? And there it is, closer to the bottom, you know quite a bit about poetry, don't you? And then we need to choose the option, well you can choose anything but not the last two. So just stick with, yeah, either the first or second or third one, just not the last one or the platypus one, and that will unlock the achievement super cool. Now just remember, at any point you can uh, make a manual save whenever you want, so whenever I say we're coming up to a missable achievement, it might always be worth just picking up a, uh, doing a manual save. So, st say I still need your help with that poem, and then choose Here I Am, There You Are, Platypoo, which is just awful. Oh, here am I. Here am I, there are you, <laughs> Platypoo. It is awful, but hey, ladies, you tell me if that would uh, get your motorboat running on a night out, if a guy came up to you in a nightclub. Would that get your motor running? Probably not. So, especially if they look a bit doofy, roofy there, like we do. So we get the earpiece, but don't worry, it doesn't show up in the inventory. Um, we'll just use that automatically later on. And we're going to enter Seagull's house once again.
So, now we're going to talk to our Papans. And what we need to say, we need to use again a couple of dialogue options, and it is, I know which words I'll use to impress goal. Near the bottom right there. Now, why do and then choose, I may not be good at waxing eloquent, but I've got this. Uh, so, I may not be good at waxing eloquent, but I've got this. And now we're going to basically end up at the har harbour where we can enter the tavern. Where our dad is basically going to get his bell... Well, he wants his bell viewed a lot more than we do, let's see. Hmm. So, end of the tavern anyway. And we're going to use the remote on Goal there. She's been at this bar a while. And she's not that drunk, which is incredible. So, use the remote with Goal. What we're going to do is switch her now over to Lady Goal. There you go. So, for me, she was on the left-hand side. So, make sure she is Lady Goal. And then what we can do is use the invitation with Lady Gold and we'll end up back at the old man's house. See, old people with previous cases of a lot of STDs and an illegitimate son usually have the charm of a legend. So, we're going to take the memo on the desk when we get back here. So, let's take that memo and then we're going to exit back to Bellevue and we're going to go and see Crane in a very angry mood because uh, Mr... <laughs> That's probably what Seagull stands for, doesn't it? STD. Seagull the dick. Ah, anyway... We're going to speak with Crane now, and we're going to give the memo to Crane. So, again, obviously, it's just like the piece of paper. I used it in the quick inventory there. And then we can, as soon as we get the radio equipment, which is just in front of him, he's pretty pissed off because we've taken all his stuff, which is understandable. Uh, but then, after this, we can exit to Bellevue and then go to Old Town on the left. So, we're going to get the achievement and trophy called Family Drama. I absolutely buckled when Rufus just said, Alright, so I farted. Goddamn hilarious. I did lose it. But we're going to use the radio equipment there with the Platypus Trapper. And then, after this little cutscene, we're going to end up in Doc's workshop again. Alright, so I farted. Hilarious. It's a crude but funny. The best kind of jokes. So just in case you didn't actually see the end of that cutscene, it basically ends up with us kissing goals. So, yeah, boy! We's pimping, bruv. 
So use the door on the right. A little bit more conversation is going to happen. We're going to get a lying about being bald remote. Or the Leobald remote. For short. Just like his hair. <laughs> So when we get the remote, we now need to use the Lie Bald remote with Lying Bald, who is the guy smoking on the left. There he goes. So use the remote with him, and then a mysterious anomaly is going to appear, and we need to exit through that portal. So it's going to happen just behind, um, I don't know, Big Nose. There it is. So we can just see it. So s nip your ass through the mysterious anomaly, and we're going to have a little speak with ourselves. What's going on? Interesting times. So choose the I want proof option at the bottom. Next up, you can choose whatever in the hell you want. Um, could be. I didn't see the genital rash at the bottom until. <laughs> until I already picked the bedwetting phase, so... God damn it, I missed the funniest one there. But that's fine, it literally doesn't make a difference. The dialogue's always going to be the same anyway. And for the last dialogue option, just choose... Oh well, I'll go rescue goal then. As soon as it appears, oh well, I'll go rescue goal then. So, a few things to do, plus we're getting the missable achievement. I'm not sure if it's missable, but anyway, let's go and talk to Doc. Uh, apparently, we've got free reign, of course, because we are Donna's little bitch, basically. Um, choose the option, this element on Donna's temple, is that also an implant? The third option down right there. And then, smash through the dialogue, of course, using the B button or the start button. Remember, if you've been fast-tracking the dialogue, skip it over it completely. That is your other option, and then choose, let me try something. Very, very nice. Okay, next up, what we're going to do is talk to Goal. So soon as the dialogue finishes with Doc, let's go and talk to Goal. Rufus the Doofus. We had a kiss, so, oh, I mean, I've got a rescue now. It's just automatic, isn't it? Choose, Doc mentioned that Donna has an implant too. Third option down. Automatic love, baby. And then choose, wow, Doc keeps a bottle of champagne in his office. That's either to get really drunk with because he hates his grandma, oots, oots, oots. Or, you know, he's celebrating a good time. But anyway, with that, we will get Goal's cartridge. Happy day, sorry about that, Goal. Kiss you later, baby. Unless you hate me again, which will probably happen. We're using the draw, we got to go and use the draw, which is at the bottom of the ramp right there. And then we need to pick up the remotes from the drawer. I think there's only one in there that we can just pick up. Yeah, so yeah, two more remotes. So we can pick up the one, act as two, tidy as hair, girl. Now what we need to do, nip inside your inventory when you've got a second. Nip inside your stuff and then combine Gold's cartridge with Donna's remote. Not confused? Awesome. So combine Gold's cartridge with Donna's remote. There we go. That should should be cool. And then we're going to use Donna's remote with Donna. Are you still with me? Not confused? Okay, cool. That's what I like. So using Donna's remote with Donna and something funny, not funny for these guys is going to happen.
Oh my god, you shot them dead. Now they are brown bread. Unlucky. So let's exit back through the portal there. Exit through the mysterious anomaly and we are going to get the achievement called Pre-Paradox. Achievement slash trophy, sorry. I keep forgetting to say trophy. After this bit of dialogue and you get back, Pre-Paradox will unlock. And then when we're back, we're going to pick up the crowbar and the weapon near Donegal. Not Golgol, but Donegal. So we've got the pre-paradox, we're going to pick up the couple of items, and this time we can just exit to the left, to the lock. Who's better looking though, Gol or Donna? And Donna's got wild hair, and I love that about... I love it, genuinely. If any man or woman has weirdly different coloured hair, genuinely, that's like a plus 10% in my books. It's just so unique and cool. I love it. Right, so what we're going to do now, after all this dialogue happenings, basically we're now talking to ourself from the past, which we are technically the future, which was the present, but now we're talking to technically the future, which was the past. Anyway, let's not get bogged down with who's in what to who. Let's just move on and use the crowbar with the electrodes. Right, choose the dialogue option Zeeble Zooble. There's going to be one that confuses you, Zabble Zobble, but it's Zeeble Zooble at the very bottom. So we're going to use that and then blast through the dialogue. So does that mean that we are now the future and they are the past, or are they the future and which is the present future? Or are they the past future? Oh my god, my brain, it ams explodio right now. Right, now we can just interact with the clock that we are already in front of. And there's going to be another, there's basically going to be one big cutscene here with Donegal. Oh, well, well, we've all had our fair share of being slapped after trying to dance with a bird. Eh, or a bird house, I suppose. Well, there's a joke in there somewhere. Anyway, big dialogue scene coming up with Donegal. Your dialogue choices for this do not matter. You'll basically have to exhaust it all anyway, so just go through every single dialogue option with Donegal, and job is as good as your nan. So again, I'm not sure if there are any particular ones that make this part go any faster. So like I said, just exhaust all the dialogue. And, well, with the cutscenes, do not press the start button. We're going to be getting another Hazar achievement with the guy singing. So I'll let you know just when we get there.
So from this point on, do not skip the cutscene. As soon as it uh, the screen goes to black, we're going to be coming up with the guy singing on screen, and we need to watch that whole cutscene. Let him sing for about 30 seconds, so we get the achievement. Huzzah! Put bowels to the wow! Don't skip this scene, damn it! Enjoy! So we've put our bows to the wow, and now we basically ended up in like a future slash past slash present slash alternate time or alternate universe of the same part of the same map that we're in. So the maps basically look exactly the same, obviously you just got a bit of a murkier background and things are a tiny little bit different. So here is our uh, fast travel map. Now what we have to do first is choose the topmost bunch of question marks on the right topmost that is where we're going to go to Porta Fisco Porta Fist though <laughs> yeah. Right then well welcome to Quay or K or Gay Head up to the man lying down, and there's a power inverter that we can see, which we're going to pick up. Most importantly, there is a pick-up, pin-up puzzle piece, which is in the box behind the box where the power inverter was. So you can probably just get it on screen. It's still by the lying down man, so make sure to pick that one up. As we can see, I'm just going to show you... Um, well, I'm not going to show you the settings. You know what the settings are, don't you? But I'm going to show you that we should, by now, have 9 out of 12 pieces. Wow, goal, that is looking seductive. This is what we had to do before Tinder, OnlyFans and selfies. You had to do it on a puzzle piece and hopefully see that everyone found it. Anyway, go into, uh, le <laughs> exit to the lower right green area and you see this big power <laughs> turbine on the right. Interact with the hatch, again pressing the A button and then use the power inverter with the hatch. Like, there we go. So I use the quick inventory. It's just a big ball looking thing. Press the white button on it and then we can use the door. So it's very simple, but I'll tell you what to do. Uh, so basically, when you knock it once and it goes up to the green tick. You actually have to, have to press the left stick to go back down. And then as soon as we get three knocks there, then you can press the green button. So go down, knock, go down again, knock, Go down again, knock, and then go down again, knock, until you get the required four this time. So there's an order that you've got to do it in. So it's three, four. This time, you only have to knock once. And then for the last time, we have to knock five times. So make sure that there's five knocking symbols on, and then press the, the green tick, and we're good to go. Into the rebel jab. Well, damn, who's that thick boy on the right? It's Janos, but who's that thick girl in the middle, huh? God damn, you've been doing some squouts. Anyway, <laughs> bit of talking, and then, holy crap, it's Tony. Ah, oh, man, it's the girl who hates us. But damn, but girl, you looking thick. T-H-I-C-C, -C, man. Anyway, shut up. Now I would highly advise making a manual save right here after we pick up the canister. What we're doing is getting a Tease the Dragon achievement. So make a manual save, and I only say that in case you make a mistake. I almost did. But uh, choose the option, the dolphin pool needs to be cleaned again, recruit. Basically, we're going to piss her off until she punches us to death, more or less. 
So, yeah, the Dolphin Pool needs to be cleaned again, recruit. And then for the second option, we... <laughs> it's funny. Now choose... By the way, I want my coffee black for the meeting recruit. I like my coffee like I like my men. And that is, I don't really like coffee. More of a tea drinker myself. <laughs> recruit! And then for the final one then, <laughs> choose drop and give me 20 recruit. And then what that will result in is our death, basically. So after we get brain damage to death, make sure to choose the B option. Do not, for the love of God, choose Y. Make sure you're pressing B slash circle, if you're on the PlayStation, and then just choose continue. That'll just put us in the same spot, and we also get to tease the dragon trophy. If you accidentally choose the Y button, it will actually start a new game. So if you haven't made a manual save in a while, then you'll probably want to cry and throw your control at the window, or probably say screw it. So just make sure you've done that. So when we get outside, we're going to now talk to the goon, and we're going to be getting another missable achievement. Um, have a little dialogue option, but basically the first one we need to choose is we could practice a little freestyling. So there it is. Choose the we could practice a little freestyling. And then after all that's done, we can just say smell you later to go. It's only this one we need for the Freestyler Achievement Trophy. Achievement. So, next things next, we're going to go up to where Gold is standing and enter the very subtle pink tent. Subtle, I say sarcastically, of course. And we again, a couple of dialogue options we're going to be slamming through. So, first of all, Excellent. even though we can see he's a psychic, we're going to actually ask him. So, there it is. Are you some sort of psychic? Next up, choose can you predict the lottery numbers, which I tell you what, if I was a psychic, I would be a scabatrillionaire. Then choose, oh come on, tell me the lottery numbers, and I would be a really big scatrillionaire by now. You do couples counselling now? And then for the last one, just choose I don't want to bother you any longer. Okay, so we do have a, pi a pin-up piece in this area, but first we're going to interact with the uh, bananas, and we're going to... Interact with them three times. He doesn't pick them up twice. Because, hey, everybody loves a banana, right? Not me. Actually, I do. So, interact with the th bananas three times. He's going to pick them up eventually. And then before we leave, in the bottom left corner of the screen, under the trash can, is the pin-up part 10 out of 12. Could be potentially tricky to see. They are a bit tricky to see. if You can easily just walk straight past them. But that should now be 10 out of 12. And then we can exit back to Kue. Use the remote with goal, and now we should have baby goal active, and there's a particular way that we can tell she's active. And that's it. She says her name, which is pretty cool. That's like having your own name tattooed on you for some reason, just in case. Uh, choose, <laughs> are you coming with me to the fortune teller when you speak to b -b -b baby goal? I'm sorry, I'm just joking if you've got your name tapped on you. I just never get it. It's like, ah, oh, crap, I forgot my name. Oh, right, it's Kyle. That's cool. That's cool. I know my name now. So we're entering the Fortune Teller tent. Now we're going to, again, do a couple of um, interactoring, dialogue interactoring, as it were. How do I prevent Goal from marrying Cletus? Next, choose what does our future together look like?
and then choose This Is All Humbug, You're Holding The Ball Upside Down. <laughs> Didn't like what you wanted to hear, huh, buddy? So again, we're coming up to a missable achievement. So if you want to make a manual save, of course, just keep doing that if you prefer. If not, it's, it's easy enough, should be fine. But we're going to use the remote with gold now, and that's going to change her into our seamanish friend, old Spunky Goal right there. By the way, I know that spunky has a different meaning, it doesn't just mean semen, but, you know, for the jokes and the sake of the video, then, you know, I'm just going to do it like that. So, dialogue option number one, we're going to ask, what are this week's lottery numbers? Then choose, will we be rich? Lottery winner, rich. And then choose, oh, hello Spank Dog, thank you for the ad, my friend. <laughs> and then choose, what was that about our wealth? Thanks for the ad there, Spank Dog. I'll make sure to add you back, buddy. Uh, we need to choose that option twice, by the way. So what was that about our wealth? We need to choose that option twice, and that is where Spunkinator is going to lose a head and choke our friend out to death. So what was that about our wealth again? And, well, enjoy the cutscene and get the A Bond for Life achievement and trophy. <laughs> Angry. Angry young woman. So, we're going to exit back to the cutter, which is basically our ship thing on the left-hand side. So, we've done all we can for now in this area, but we will be back. We're going to look at the radar, which is behind a bozo. And um, what we're going to do is pick the couple of question marks, which is on the right-hand edge. The sort of third row down, if you want to call it that. And it's basically the, the North Pole. Oh, well, that's pretty cute. We're at the North Pole, but there's no Santa Claus or anything, so... Well, no point. If Santa's not here, well, there's goddamn no point. So, a couple of things we're going to be picking up. The hose is the first one. Which is on the floor, of course. How's up your nose? We're going to pick up the snow pile. And with that, it's going to get us some ice. As you'll be able to see. So we pick up the snow, we should have ice. Makes sense. Although, if you pick up snow, surely it would just be snow again. But still, it's all good. We're going to exit into the cutter. And then we're going to use the ice in the mug of tea, which is by Goal, on the table. There she is. So put the ice in. Blop. Delicious. And then we're actually going to pick up the mug of tea. So pick it up when you've got the option to. Like now. <laughs> that is some ridiculous coffee with some ridiculous Bernie piss. That's automatic, by the way, but god damn, that would literally sort a toilet in half. Make sure to pick up the torch, he's not exactly going to need it. And then look at the pole star, which is in the sky. Now press the X button on that to look at that. Basically, we're going to learn the lottery numbers. You don't have to memorize them, but holy crap, I wish life were that easy. See some numbers in the sky? Go on, chuck it down. Win a couple of billion pound, life will be good. Anyway, sad that doesn't happen to us, we're going to look at the radar once again when we're back into cutter and then we're going to the floating black market which is the bottom most bunch of question marks Oh, we haven't seen the Organon slash cheap Star Wars get up for a while, have we? So we're going to pick up the bait fish, which is still by the fisherman. So whatever's happening, the fisherman is still here, still going strong. So, I mean, you can't really deny his enthusiasm for fishing or the fact he's been doing it for a number of years, wherever we are in the past or the future. Anyway, so 
we need to talk to the fisherman after you picked up the bait. Talk to him and then choose, ah, oh, get off it. You're afraid of the Organon cheap Star Wars get up too. And then choose, if you're not afraid, then why did you stop fishing? He he he. We got him like a vice grip to the bowels. Now, choose the option, could you please catch a boot for me? Could you please catch a boot for me? Second one from the bottom there. And then what we need to do is choose the option, I won't go away until you catch me a boot. I don't know why we want a boot so bad. Well, we'll find out a little bit later on. Now what we need to do, put the controller down for just about two to three minutes. So basically uh, what will happen is, Gold's going to keep complaining about being cold. All we're going to do is literally just stand here until the fisherman decides to give up and gives us a boot. I mean, literally, Goal could just go inside the cutter if she wanted and wait for us like she has been for most of the game and in the bar. But not this time, apparently. So, obviously, I've edited it down uh, again just for a little bit of time in the video to around 30 seconds. But it's only it only takes about two or three minutes. So, just chill your beanbags. Go and get yourself a torch by drinking iced coffee and then burning your toilet off with your own whiz. And just wait until we get a boot. Blup. Right, so Fisherman's going to have enough. He's going to say, God damn, just get your ass in, please. Here is your boot. So, now we've got a boot there, goes a bit nippy, but we're going to look at the radar and go to Porta Fisco, which, remember, is the top option. See? Heroes don't just have to wear capes, we can stand outside in the freezing cold until somebody else gets us a boot. We are Am's hero. What we're going to do then, we're going to use the torch with the burning barrel, which is just in the middle of the screen right there, so whip open. I hope you've dried it, and that's not still covered in urine, otherwise, well, that'll be pretty... Uh, Disgustingly smelly and it'll burn your eyebrows off as well. And then we can exit via the top level. Plus the sleeping guy and goal. We're going into the street canyon. Not a lot to do here, but there is only one thing. We're going to use the torch. The uh, pissy fiery torch with the mountain of tyres. Bop. And then we get a Springfield from the Simpsons type fire on the tyres type thing. We're going to pick up the burning tyre and exit to Quay. So again, just make sure that you've picked up that one burning tire that flicked its way to us. And now we are going to the sewer entrance and heading our way to the rebel camp. All right, Aroni. So, what's first? We're going to use the tire with the service hatch, which is on the far right, just behind Janosch's big ass. Big ass. So, there we go. We're going to use the tire and use that with the service hatch. As soon as that is done, we can then use the bait fish with the tire. We're trying to get the dolphins out. Whether it's just to piss off Tony's butt right there, or Tony's head. But we are trying to piss her off anyway, because apparently that's <laughs> that's what exes do, right? They hate each other. Not always, sometimes it's love. But not for always. So use the bait fish then with the tire. And well Yeah. And I said, yeah, well, because, uh, well, I mean, we get the animal lover achievement, but the baby dolphins have just been turned into cans of tuna. So, oh, it's a bit of a win-lose situation there for us. So pick up the wading pool before we head on out. We're going to the left three times, basically to go back onto the cutter. Whoopsie-daisy, sorry, just killed your baby dolphin, kids. Ugh.
So, taking a look at the radar, we are going back to the bottom one, the floating black market. And then what we need to do is just keep walking left until the screen moves until we see the Gilligan Gadget Shop again. So then, whack out your couple of cans of tuna and we're going to use that with the bowl. Because for some reason the cat, we're not allowed to go in just in case the tiny little kitty kills us or whatever. So, apparently, uh, our ass is too big, so we need to get the very fit and smaller goal through it, the cap flap. So, Asuka, can you fit through the flap gap? Um, no, no, come on, goal. That's, that's harsh. And in, in this day and age where everybody gets offended by everything, I tell you what, that's pretty fattest toward me. So, screw you, goal. But she can actually uh, fit in the cat flap, so... I guess that's a win-win situation for us. So we can forgive the wobbling comments right there. Now, after that, we can just choose the option on you go, or on we go, and go through the gadget shop. So even in this bleak and fury future, bleak and dreary future, or past or whatever, this shopper mat's still going. So we're going to use the bananas right here with the banana straightener, as you can see on the left. So, well, I suppose what that gets us is, is, a, is a straight banana. So, top banana, bruv. Use the lotto mat to get a prize. Just press the A button on it once, and that's going to get us a prize. And then what we need to do then, after this is done, is use that prize with the shop -o mat Oh, hey, we got lucky. That's insanely good luck. So get out the prize from your inventory and use it with the big robot shop -o mat behind the till. And now we can just head back out. And we're going back to the cutter. Now, we are finally going to the last question mark, question mark, question mark island, which is the Isla. Watch it. Watch the Isla, man. So go back onto the cutter and go to the Isla. Watch it. Wow, I'm so clever. <laughs> so again, look at the radar, look at the last couple of question marks, and we're going to the Watch It Island. So when we get here, what we're going to do is use the bananas, just the regular bananas. Do not use the straightened banana because we need that for later on. So use the uh, bunch of bananas. Uh, the straight banana does work, but because we need it for later on, um, it's just better to use the bunch of bananas. So use that with the diesel generator exhaust pipe. So stick it in the exhaust. There we go. So that starts exploding and dying. Happy days. Next, we're going to use the hose. So whip out your hose, boy, and we're going to use that with the generator. Again, pressing the white button there. Oh, well, I bet that's delicious. I mean, you drunk acid in the first game, so, you know, a bit of diesel will be fine this time. Use the canister with the diesel generator, and that is going to get us our achievement slash trophy called Captain Planet after we get the diesel. Top job. So we got a diesel, a canister full of diesel. Now before moving on, just on the right hand side of this screen is the 11th out of 12th pick up pin up puzzle piece part. Whatever it is, but make sure to get that before you head up to the radio tower. Right, so now we are good. Couple of tiny things to do here. We are going to pick up the broken transmitter, which is uh, directly by goal. So whip that up. And again, something big, but you can stick that in your pocket very easily. And then pick up the final pin-up part, which is on a white square next to the picture of the radio tower. On the left-hand side. Just sort of where the it kind of looks like a door or entrance or something. 
but it is there just next to the picture pick that up and that should be 12 out of 12 hopefully if you've done what i done earlier which was start a new game if the cheetah uh, thing messed up for you that is where you should get the achievement so for now we're good to go we're going to exit to the dock and then go back to the cutter Right then, so again, that tiny massive broken transmitter, we're going to use that with dock and then we're going to get a transmitter, you know, all cleaned up and stuff. Well, cheers for sorting out the transmitter dock. Thank you for docking our dockness to dock up your transmitter. So use the same transmitter we just got. Use that by pressing the Y button with the radar. And we're going to get the Woogie achievement and trophy. <laughs> and then afterwards, just look at the radar and go to the top option, Port of Fisco. Right then, so when we're here, we're going to go and speak to Goon, the homeless guy on the right-hand side by the sewer. What you need to do is use the shoe with Goon. He thinks it's a free meal, so he gives us an umbrella, but he's going to be left sorely disappointed. Although I suppose if you fry it up and put a couple of herbs on it, you know, you might be able to edibly get it down, yeah? Yeah, bon apple tit, Goon. Enjoy it, apparently. So we're going to enter the sewers now, and we're going to use the diesel with the tank. So remember the diesel we got from Isla Watch It? We need to whap that out, press the Y button with it to use it in the tank, and then we need to press the button which is just next to the door. So stick your fingers on the button, and then we're going to go in the door to the rebel camp again. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do is pick up any of the air fresheners. Uh, these little air freshener trees. You can just do the one and then Big Roofy Doofy will collect the rest. So they're going to be fine. Now we've got the broken umbrella from Goon after we just gave him the shoe. So what you need to do is go into your inventory, combine the air freshener trees with the broken umbrella. Gives it a nice, even though it doesn't work and it's a piece of crap, it certainly gives it a nice smelling broken umbrella <laughs> now what we need to do now we ugh, now we need to go to the back of the area um, which you can just see the character walking across there and the way to do that is go here where it says back and then what we need to do is with the only drain in the background use the straight banana with it and then a bit of comedy is gonna happen or not apparently Now, personally, that looked like it hurt. As soon as you get your nuts whacked in like that on a pipe, surely that's game over. Even worse than Tony giving you a punch to the mouth. So when we get here, make sure to interact with the lock. So we need to use the lock, which is just to the left of Tony, just by the entrance. And then we should be good to go. The dolphins are going to swim to the other side, and then we're going to exit to the left. Now, if anyone who enjoys Peter is playing this game, they're going to be pissed off with this next bit because we need to use the tornado equipment or torpedo equipment and we need to use them with the dolphins. Now, I can guarantee animal lovers are probably having a half a stroke at this by now. 
But they watched Baby Dolphins die earlier, so they probably already stopped watching. So, there we go. Use that with the dolphins, and now the dolphins are ready to go. Happy days. They don't know that I've killed the babies yet, seemingly. So, we are going back onto the cutter. So, head all the way back to the left. We're going to look at the radar behind Bozo, and then we're going to go to the Isla, watch it again, and basically exit all the way right to the radio tower. Okay, so we're needing a couple of things from this area. Like I said, if you didn't manage to get the 12th pin-up part, now you've got your last, basically, opportunity to do it. Um, which is, of course, just on the uh, radio tower picture on the left-hand side of the screen. So, use the remote with goal, and now she should be... B -b 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 baby goal! And now we're going to use the wading pool with the plateau, just on the right. So, whip your pool out, then. And then press the Y button to stick it on the plateau right there. We need to use the pump, which is by the right-hand side of it. Obviously, we don't have a pump in our inventory, but the pump is there, just ready to get that delicious. Now, even though water is rain, water in the world of Deponia is green liquid diarrhea ass or something. Anyway, maybe that's for another... T maybe we'll figure out why that is in just a minute. So, we're going to talk to Baby Gull and now say, I've got a plan. Can you stand on that plateau for a minute? Happy days. Ah, oh, baby girl, she's so innocent. She'd do anything you say, which is never necessarily a good thing. Seemingly. Don't move. I'll be right back. <laughs> well, we are a real friend-ish. Now we need to give the broken umbrella with air fresheners to baby girl. You can already see where this is going, can't you? Lightning storms and, you know, this can only go well. I'm sure it'll be fine. Next, after that... Ooh, such a cute laugh. Hee 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 hee. And I just ruined it. Sorry about that. Give the uh, prize to Goal. The four-leaf clover prize. I think she'll definitely need that. And now what we need to do is use the transmitter on the radio tower. So we should only have a couple of items left in our inventory. There it is. So whap out your transmitter. Use it with the radio tower. And then basically after this we can head just back down and then left to the cutter. Okay, so who here wants to play the world's worst minigame, or at least in the Deponia series so far? Have a look at the radar, and we are going to play for me, which was the most stupidest and annoyingest uh, minigame ever. So let me explain um, just as I go along here. So, what you've got is three buttons, and you can mo use them to move the dolphins, but you can only move one dolphin at a time. So say if you want to move it right, you have to press the right button, then wait for that same dolphin's turn to come around again to move it forward. Now, you'll get used to the controls pretty easy, but the main aim of the crappy game is to get one of the dolphins in the submarine. Easy, red? Wrong. The sub will always anticipate your move, so even if you're one in front of it, it'll always seemingly just move past you. So, but there is an easier way to do this. Now, what we need to do, you can... It's probably best to um, get the sub up into sort of any corner. Now, for me, the easiest one was the bottom left corner because it only has two squares by it. And what we basically need to do is uh, get that submarine trapped and then put the two dolphins in front of it so that it cannot move past you. So, again, this one took personally about 35 minutes of trying because I was just going sort of for random things. Um, I... I was just seeing if we could just attack it full, you know, full on, happy days. Uh, it didn't exactly work like that. So as you can see, you can do it this way if you wanted. You need to basically put the submarine in kind of like a pincer movement. So, and what the main thing is as well, which I was not getting, is if you are close to the submarine, you need 
at least two, if not all three, dolphins pointing towards the submarine. So if you've got the one who's ready to make the move, but one dolphin is looking to the left or right, then that um, then the submarine will just nip past it because you weren't facing towards it ready to pounce. So it's a bit of a pain in the douche nozzle, to be honest. So this is the easiest way that I could think of. So do it, if you can, get it in such a way that the submarine starts moving towards the bottom left side corner. And try and get at least two of your dolphins in very close proximity. The third one, try and keep him behind just a little bit. You know, two or three squares for now, and that is fine. So what we can do, as you can see now, I've got the dolphins both ready to um, back the submarine up into the corner, which is exactly what we're doing. And if we are here, just remember to turn left or right. Don't obviously go forward with the other dolphin. Now the submarine is trapped. We have now got them in such a position where we can now, um, well, basically make the attack. So get your third dolphin there at the back forward. Then move the, what we need to do is move the top dolphin forward, basically. So there we go. We should now be able to move that top dolphin forward. And now we can use the third dolphin. All of them are attacking, and that is how it goes. So all of them were front-facing, front so basically that dolphin, that submarine, didn't have anywhere to go. So hopefully, I, I did try and explain that gen genuinely the best I could. It was a son of a bitch of a mini game. Like I said, took me tries and tries, around 35 minutes. If you did end up messing up, you can just easily uh, just reset the button. There's a reset button on there. Um, but that is the best advice that I can give you for that. So hopefully you can get that one nice and easy, and then we can finally move on towards the end of the game. So, when we're outside the cutter, use the locker and pick up the diving suit. I really did, that minigame really did piss me off. A way to ruin a good game, personally. Use the lamp in the middle just under Bozo and pick up the candle, and then we can go inside the cutter. Once inside in the deliciously warmness, we are going to use the candle with the pot, which is next to goal. So stick in the candle, bountiful. And now we're going to pick up that pot with wax. Stick it in your pocket again, don't worry about the wax and fire everywhere. And now we're going to use the remote with goal, which means our little spunkinator friend goal should now be active. So now we can head outside when she gets annoyed, after she stops being annoyed. So there we go, head outside. Now what we need to do is use the doorbell three times, but you can't actually walk into the doorbell because as you can see, we just walk immediately into the cutter. So as soon as we get outside, just press the left or right bumper to scroll across, like for now. There we go, I just use the bell. Now do that three times, basically we're playing a prank. I love Rufus's smile, it's, it's a hilarious innocent smile. So, yeah, just do this three times until she gets really annoyed and wax her face in again. Now that looked like it hurt a little bit. But look at that, not a scratch. God, what a man. What a friggin' man. So now we need to use the pot of wax in your inventory with the dent of Rufus's face. So stick that on. And now we're going to be doing a little bit of diving. So we're going to use the diving suit with the hook. The hook, which is basically just in front of our face. So there we go. Get your diving suit out there and then interact with it. And then what we do is use the diving suit and Doofy Roofy will go under the water. Okay, on the right hand side there are two hoses that we need to pick up, so pick up one, pick up the other, and then exit back to the cutter which is the top left. Oh, 
Oh, we got some dolphins looking pissed off, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So, when we are back up anyway, we need to go into your inventory and combine the hose with the other hose to make, well, guess what? That's right, a broomstick. I mean, that would be in other games' logic, but no, we're obviously making a longer hose, that's all. <laughs> so, when we have the long hose, we need to use said long hose, and we need to use that with the water faucet. By again, pressing the Y button. And then we need to use the hose with the diving suit. So the hose is actually on the floor now, not in the inventory. It's directly by our feet there. So pick it up and then use that with the diving suit rather than the diving helmet, of course. Right, that one should be good. So now we can actually use the water faucet. So press A on that. And then as soon as this one's done, we can then use the impression of our beloved face with the diving helmet. So, I mean, that is one good-looking, you know, indentation of <laughs> of Rufus's face. Don't use it with the diving suit, of course. You can't do that. So, we need to use it with the diving helmet and then talk to Bozo and say, Can you please help me lower the dummy? Well, shit, son, those dolphins were extremely pissed off. Oh, <laughs> my god, extremely angry. So, maybe that's what happens when you kill their animal's kids. They're not exactly going to be happy. So, obviously, we've got the diving suit, so obviously press A on that, and then we can use now the underwater hatch, which is on the right-hand side. There it is. You can skip this cutscene, but do not skip the next one with the guy singing. This is the one. Do not skip this cutscene. And we will get the achievement will work over time. Will work overtime is not exactly known in my language any anyway, because overtime can suck it unless you're paying me triple time. Anyway, we're going to be doing a bit of transporting. Now, for each new screen, I'm basically just going to say either the right one or the left one, etc. Because uh, there are normally th two or three transporters. So, first of all, what we're going to use is the right transporter here. So, use the right one. Now, it may be a bit confusing uh, because they're on, obviously, different screens, but I'll try and keep it as simple as I can. Once again, we're going to use the rightmost transporter again because we're a fly now, which is hilarious. So, use that one again. And then we're going to use the same right transporter we used just a second ago. So, stick your noggin in that right transporter. Job done. Right. There's only two screens, by the way, but, you know, we need to use particular ones. Now we're going to use the top transporter, so we need to use the option up. And, ah, oh, hey, Tony, what's up, girl? You got a thick-ass gun. Use that up, transporter. And then what we're going to do is use the right transporter again. Now, this bit can be generally confusing, but trying to keep it nice and simple as pimple. Once again, we're going to use that top transporter. Honestly, I know what I'm doing. This is all for golden nuggets and an achievement. You see the frog there now? Tidy. Right, now we're a frog. What we need to do is talk to the fly in the left transporter. 
So press the X button, oh sorry, the A button, we're going to talk to him. Uh, basically, Frog Rufus is going to eat him. It's all protein at the end of the day, so happy days. Press A of the middle transporter that we are already in. And then we're going to use the left transporter now. So stick your noggin in that left side transporter. I've had enough of saying transporter already. But we need to keep going. So we need to use the next left most transporter. Trans, trans, transporter right, yo. And then just use the right transporter again. Exactly the same one that we just came out of. Use it again. And that is going to get the behind the mirror achievement slash trophy. Well, this looks as guardish. Anyway, when we're back, use that same left transporter that we just came out of. And that should almost be it for the transporters. We now need to exit up the ladder. So there you go. Click the upstairs option. And we are basically on the final scene now. So you can press the start button here. These little cutscenes you can just immediately skip rather than smash through all of the dialogue. And we are finally done with the transporters. Had enough of saying that word. So let's go right now to the bomb, bomba, bomba, clat control room. Okay, so head to the right, go up the ramp, and we are going to pick up the bag next to Donna. Donna's looking a bit chilled. Maybe she's finally on that big come down after being so blah, 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 earlier on. Right, so we've picked up the bag, and we get Donna's remote with two cartridges. Now, what we need to do is use the cartridge on Donna. So get your inventory out, get the cartridge, the, just the cartridge on its own without the remote, and then use it on Donna. And guess who she turns into? Ah, oh, she didn't say it this time, but she turns into b -b -b baby girl. Right, so after that and the dialogue is done, we are going to use the remote on Donna this time. So as soon as, uh, as, soon as you shut the hell up, you don't need to be talking this long. You can just throw something at Cletus and stuff. And so then after all that, we can now, we can finally use the remote on Donna. I forgot that that cutscene was slightly a bit longer than I anticipated. But now Donna is going to turn into the Spunkinator. The angriest Donna. Or the, angri the angriest goal Donna. Now what we can do then, after this little cutscene, again you can press the start button just to uh, skip it. Like so. Now we need to use the controls twice. Now you can make a manual save. I prefer to make a manual save here. Basically, after the first time that we do it, basically, um, we disappear. Now, for some people's save, he, uh, uh, Rufus completely disappears and he doesn't come back and we can't actually use the controls. For me, he disappeared, but we can use the controls. So, that's why I just said to make a manual save just in case. So, we, we disappeared, but I end up having to use the right stick to use the controls again. Um, otherwise, for some reason, it just wasn't working. Not sure why I disappeared, um, but, you know, up you get. So, if you can, use the right bumper or right stick to get to the controls again, and then we need to walk out of the control area when given a chance. So, have you got time for one more miserable achievement? Uh, of course we have. All we've got to do then is punch Cletus ten times in the face. Um, I accidentally clicked the remote. Don't worry though if that happens. Basically all it does is change Lady and uh, Baby and Spunky 
to the other way. But just keep punching Cletus in the face for the time being until the achievement slash trophy, not in the face, unlocks. It's not a, it, Rufus doesn't exactly look like he's punching him hard anyway, so, uh, and we're not being punched back, so. Keep on punching, keep on punching, stick your nut in a big old Elvis head. And he's, he's got a headband on as well. Loser! Right, so, now we can crack on with the game. So, you've got to use the remote, and when that happens, you've then got to talk to Spunky Donegal. So, every time that we are on our back and Cletus is on top, ruggedly, um, then we have to speak to Spunky Donegal. And, basically, we've got to punch Cletus again to regain the upper hand. Uh, so, basically, we need to be on top for these punches to count. Um, which is why we just done the missable achievement first before moving on. So basically we just need to keep punching, we need to punch him in the face, choose the remote, uh, speak to Spunky Donegal. Uh, we need to do this a total of four times until we've got the red remote by our head that we can grab. So there it is, for some reason Cletus decides to not grab the remote and destroy it, which is uh, good for us, but we need to grab the remote behind us. So press the A button on there. For some reason, really taking my time with this <laughs> with this fight. Bit of cutscene is going to happen, but we are going to have to say a couple of things. So we're going to talk to Cletus now. Oh, sorry, no. We're going to use Gold's remote, the one with the red button. Make sure it's the one with the red button there on the left hand side and use it with Goal. And then basically what's going to happen is she's going to stick a nut straight into Cletus. Well, you'll see. And a couple of dialogue options. Choose yes, Cletus. Or hi, Cletus. And then choose Cletus didn't lie to you. Naughty, naughty, you teasing her. And not in a good way. And then for the final one, choose I've still got the other remote. <laughs> dun dun dun! So choose I still have still got the other remote, but Cletus has two of the three um, goals. So we've got one left in which to get a revenge with in the next game. But basically, this is it. So now you can put the control down, and we can just watch the ending cutscenes and credits if you want. I skip through them all and get the final two achievements of the game. So, life is good. So you will get this last Hazar achievement anyway, you don't have to actually watch anything. So now we can literally, you can watch the cutscenes if you'd prefer, see what else is going on. Listen up everybody. Or what I do is just press the start button and that'll do me fine. So, as soon as we are bought out of the credits, um, the achievement thanks. Uh, for giving everyone their 15 minutes of fame. So, congratulations to everyone again working on this brilliant game. But that is that one then, guys and gals. So that is Chaos on Deponia. That's the second out of four that I am going to be making for you. Or the guides, anyway. So, again, if you did enjoy the game, if you enjoyed the guide as well, hopefully we had a good few laughs. As always, don't forget, of course, then to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Don't forget, of course, to check me out on all my socials as well. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And speaking of which, a big, huge, massive shout-out to everyone who continues to support uh, the show and the channel on Patreon. I do highly, highly, megaly appreciate it. I love you, yes. And, well, 
that's it then guys and gals so thanks so much for watching again i'll see you in the next one b -b -b big love